Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. A man was telling his buddy, you won't believe what happened last night. My daughter walked into the living room and said, Dad, cancel my allowance immediately. Forget my college tuition loan. Rent my room out. Throw all my clothes out the window. Take my TV and my laptop. Please take any of my jewelry to the Salvation Army. Then sell my car. Take my front door key away. And throw me out of the house. Then disown me and never talk to me again. Don't forget to write me out of your will and leave my share to any charity you choose. Holy smokes, replied the guy's friend. She actually said that? Well, she didn't put it quite like that. She actually said, Dad, meet my new boyfriend, Mohammed. We're going to work together on Hillary's election campaign. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America. On a Tuesday, good morning, good morning, Zeb at the Ranch. Have a good one. Uh, thank you very much, and good morning, everybody. I'm Zeb Bell at Zeb at the Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, and, of course, some of our great advertisers, including, of course, Lee's Furniture Floors and More at 459 Overland in Burley, and, of course, don't forget Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Mm-hmm. Start on the route service today. Call them at 734-6969. Um, the quarterback of the team that runs the show over at the main studios, and we say good morning to the lovely, vibrant, vivacious Gina Jameson. Good morning. Well, good morning. How are you? Lovely Tuesday, as it were. You know, and yesterday was nice, too. A little bit chilly with the wind, you know, but not too bad. A nice day. It was really. a beautiful day, and I'm expecting today to be even better because I want to get some uh, house chores done, and I think I'm going to start repainting my son's room this week. Oh, you know, I never found a paintbrush that would fit my hand. Really? No, I never. I found a lot of them. <laughs> Keep them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we have a pledge? We have Rotten on for the pledge and Mr. Michael Rogers on for the weather. Very good, Gina. Thank you so much. And right now, Rotten, good morning, if you would, please. Good morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As always, my dear friend, thank you. Job well done. We appreciate you. God bless. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the world's best weatherman ready to go. Good morning, Michael Rogers. Hello, Zeb Bell from the Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, just coming down Interstate 10. Good morning, everybody. Got a nice day coming up today. Yes, you do. You're even going to break a record. So, so of course, uh, and we've been together, and I know Zeb will answer this in two seconds. Flat, if it's warm today and cool tomorrow with clouds, what's coming through the area? Well, if you said cold front, and you're 98% point nine correct and through tomorrow. We'll start off tomorrow with uh, sun and clouds, and then you got rain in the forecast. No snow, just rain. Temperature is going to be on the cool side because when that front passes, the temperatures get cooler. So you'll be on uh, in the 50s for tomorrow. But today you should be breaking the record today. You're looking for a high today of 73 degrees. That is a good temperature to do housework inside the house. I don't get that, but that's okay. That's this is America. You can do anything you want inside, outside. When it's 73 degrees for the high. Other than that, enjoy the day. Enjoy the weather. 
It's the only weather you got. All right. The best. MichaelRogersWeather.com. Right here, weather on Zeb at the Ranch. Good morning, everybody, and don't forget our dear friends at Daryl's Cleaners. You know, a lady called me the other day, as a matter of fact, and she said, Boy, you've really been going in there for a long time. Yes, I have, because they are the best. They take care of all my Wranglers and my sports shirts, my sports jackets, everything, and do a perfect job. Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. You stop in, whether it's uh, maybe cleaning the tablecloths or your drapes, whatever, they can handle it. Do the best. Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. Also, I, I've got to brag a little bit that uh, we're very, very happy to be with SafeLink Internet. Mm -hmm. uh, these people have done an outstanding job for us, and the service has been impeccable. Whenever there's been a problem, maybe from a windstorm or whatever, they've been right here to help us, and we appreciate it. Number one choice in Idaho for high-speed Internet, that's SafeLink Internet. You call them today and get on the program. They are excellent. 677-8000. Write that number down. 677-8000. And they're launching their network in Eastern Idaho, and believe me, they're all over the state serving you SafeLink Internet. You give them a call today. Um, in just a few minutes, and I want to alert uh, grandparents and parents in general, I have a story that I'm going to get into here in just a few minutes that I'm sure many of you will not believe. I'm sure many of you will question the validity of the story, and it has been questioned and scoped out and snoped out, and it is true, and it's absolutely one of the scariest, most uh, chilling stories that I've ever had on my program. And it's in regards to parental rights and the canceling of parental rights. So stay tuned for that. That's coming up in just a very few moments. I want to remind you also about our friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric. Oh, go to the light, go to the light. What do you mean go to the light? Well, they've got all the incandescent light bulbs over there. Uh, Keith and the rest of the crew, they literally, excuse me, they bought thousands of them. And uh, the government is passing regulations, already has, that said incandescent light bulbs are a thing of the past. Well, not in my house. Uh-uh. I bought a box of these incandescent light bulbs. I'm not going to be forced and coerced by the silly government telling me what to do and how to live and what to read under what light. So there you go. Go in and buy these incandescent light bulbs. They got them in 40, 60, 75, or 100 watt at Ramsey Heating and Electric, 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. And uh, get the clear or the frosted, whichever you prefer. I got some of each. And uh, stay in the light from Ramsey Heating and Electric, 2600 Overland Avenue. Avenue in Burley. Uh, tip of the coffee cup this morning. Yes, a good old tip of the coffee cup goes out to Bryce Beck over there at Butte Irrigation. And uh, Nick and the crew over at Let's Ride. Really some nice people over there. And Mr. and Mrs. Keith Cottom. A tip of the coffee cup to all those wonderful people. And I hope they have a great, great day. Valley Wine Home and Ranch. Don't forget they've... Uh, Last week on Monday, they had their chick day. Well, <laughs> wrong chick. Anyway, they've got all the feed. They've got all the equipment. They've got everything for you for the chicks. And now for you, you know, for you going into the spring, they've got all the boots. They've got literally a size after size, style after style of area boots and men's, women's, and children's sizes. So get on in there. Have your morning cup of coffee right there at Valley White Home and Ranch. And don't forget, too, 4 H'ers. They are there to serve you with all your life stock feed to make sure that when the fairs come up, and you know it's not that far away from the fair time, uh, you're going to be ready and have your animals all fit as a fiddle at Valley Wide Home and Ranch, 910 South Oneida, and Rupert, you stop in and see them today. I was absolutely shocked yesterday when I was doing some show prep for today's program and came across this story. And right away after reading it, I thought, now, wait a minute. I know it's in a major magazine. I know it's a major story, but I wanted to prep it out, check it out. And uh, Deanne snoped it out. It is legit. And I'm going to give you this story, and I think you'll feel very chilled as a parent and or grandparent, okay? On February 19th of this year, Lawmakers in Scotland approved a very deeply controversial new law assigning an individual government overseer 
to each and every child in their country, and they are charged with monitoring the children's development. Now, this is a brazen assault on parental rights and privacy, and it's being already challenged in the court. Many parents and grandparents, etc., are uh, looping together and trying to challenge this in the court. But now listen to this. Under the new Scottish law, the National Health Service, uh-oh, what does that remind you of here in this country? Uh-huh, good class, Obamacare. The National Health Service will appoint a named person for every Scottish child up to five years of age by 2016. Now, the government guardian overseeing each child will have massive powers bestowed upon that person by the government. And uh, they will share information on the child with other bureaucracies and they will even have the power to intervene in family decisions without the consent of the parents. Uh-uh. Listen to this. Now, just a minute. Just a minute. After age five, responsibility over the child would then go to local authorities, and teachers would likely become the overseers of children's development until the age of 18. I told Gina before we started the program this morning that this was a very chilling story, is it not? It's taking away all of the parents' rights. Parents do not have rights over their children. I brought this child into the world, and now it's going to be a ward of the government? I, I don't think so. Gina, I am so absolutely chilled by this story, and I'm, I'm afraid about one other thing. I'm afraid a lot of people are going to just say, oh, pshaw, it's only going to happen over in Scotland or other countries. It'll never happen here. But did you notice that I put the emphasis on the Scottish National Health Service, which is the equivalency of what we have now with Obamacare? Exactly. Well, see, they have nationalized health care over in Europe. That's right. So, uh, yeah, so that's what that we're trying to do here, at least the administration is, which I'm highly against. And this is just another invasion on parental rights. I am not going to just hand over my child and say, okay, you guys are in charge of making sure that uh, he's learning. Why do you things. suppose this is no. being done, though? I mean, there's, got, there's a gist there's to this. There's irresponsible parents out there, that and um, just larger government. No, no, there you go. There you go. It is completely control. It is a yep. mind-shaping event for the children that the yep. government is the one-all panacea and catch-all for everything. But now listen to this. The, uh, the legislation was specifically aimed at compliance. Now I want you to really listen to the words I'm using. Aimed at compliance with the radical United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, which has been signed by a myriad of governments around the world. So here we have the Scottish government going ahead and saying that every child, can you imagine the cost that's going to be passed down for oh, that? Astronomical. astronomical. Every child is going to have an overseer away from the parents, and they're going to take power over the parents. And this is going to be in compliance with the radical United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. Gina, do people not understand? that this is absolutely George Orwell's 1984 times 1,000. I don't think that they do understand that. I think maybe some people think it's a good thing, but the, for the majority of us out there, we do not. I don't find this to be a good thing at all. It is my child. Oh, now, you, you, let's put it in perspective and talk about you and Kennedy, your okay. son. All right? All right. Uh, you go home after work tonight, and you yes. say to Kennedy, come on, Kennedy, we are going to go down, and you've been a good boy. We're going to celebrate, and you're going to, I'm going to, to buy you a cheeseburger, fries, and ice cream, and your overseer says, no, you can't do that, it's against the dietary guidelines, and this child will only have Brussels sprouts and greens, and you will not go anywhere with that child. This is the power that's going to be given to yeah. these overseers. I, I'm, and I'm not in agreement with that. I don't think, this is just big government being too intrusive into our personal lives. Too intrusive? This is the ultimate. Yeah. When they take the children at their formulative years with their minds and their inquiring questions and everything, and mom and dad have no power, mom and dad mean nothing, it's a complete assault on the family, it's a complete destruction of the family and the, and the intertwinings of a family and how they should work with dad and mom setting the rules and the children growing up in accordance with what the parents want. This is nothing more than 
and government coming in and saying, we're taking your child, we're molding your child, he's a ward of the state, and you parents, you might be, and pardon the terminology on this, the breeding machines, but we own the child. And here's the deal. What they're doing is they're grooming the next generation. They are grooming the next generation to say, okay, big government is good. You know, and, Big government will take care of you. And that's what they're grooming our children Absolutely. For. Everything with the government is all-powerful. Yes. Everything because, with the government is all-omnipotent. Yes, because we are the ones that are saying, no, government is bad, government is too intrusive. But when they get a hold of our children, they can groom them and, and just tell them, hey, you know what, big government is okay. Because I, we will take care I of you. I am absolutely, uh, I'm shocked. And I did quite a bit. I did. Deanne did because she's the expert on the computer. But we snoped this out and found many, 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 many websites and stories that are comparable in exactly the uh, uh, quantity of uh, what I gave you for this story. That's, I, 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 can't, I cannot believe that uh, Scottish citizens, the parents over there, aren't up in arms, are they? Here's the deal. Incredibly, incredibly, and that's a good word to use. This measure was uh, is known as the Children and Young People Bill. It was approved overwhelmingly in the Scottish Parliament with 103 in favor, none against, and 15 abstentions. Now, parents, uh, this is where I, I just absolutely go nuts when I think about this. Parents and legal experts and social Sociologists and religious organizations, everybody is outraged, but these lawmakers in the Scottish law making venue went over and above what everybody else said and they said we're going to pass it because the government should be in control of these children. Do you realize how ominous this is? So basically what you just told me is the people in the Scottish Parliament went against what their constituents wanted. Hmm. Bingo! That one before. And they went ahead and passed a bill that nobody wanted because it's pro-government. Oh, now, gee. Oh, wait a minute. Hark. What did you just say? Uh, doesn't that have shades of Obamacare? Um, hello? Yeah. And here's the key, folks. I'm not making any of this stuff up. If you want to take the time and the effort, look it up. All parents should be outraged everywhere around the world today. Yeah. Because government has its fingers, its tentacles, and its massive fangs into every family. But when you put this law, again, Gina, I reiterate, under the Scottish National Health Service, that should be very chilling for everyone. The world government is grooming its young people. I've got to pay some bills, and then we'll take that caller. Thank you very much. Uh, don't forget Denny's Restaurant. Oh, my, we're going to be over there for Lunch Bunch on Thursday. And again, we want to say thanks to Smith's Food King, Walmart, and Anson Mortuary. Uh, for providing some of the door prizes. It's going to be fun. We hope you're there. 11.30 on Thursday at Denny's Restaurant. America's Diner is always open with great food. Thomas and Terry, the whole crew, serving us and you both. I mean, it's going to be fantabulous. You're going to love it. Great menu. And like I said, the people are so doggone friendly. Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland in Burley, with Zeb's Lunch Bunch coming up on this Thursday. You be there. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, that reminds me a bit about Common Core. There are some very distinct uh, uh, ties together with that. I agree with you. And I will be at lunch lunch. God bless you, Fred. You enjoy some pretty special hey, people. how are you feeling? How's the sciatic nerve? Oh, I've had some setbacks, but we'll talk about it on Thursday. I'm about ready to take a hammer and nail and just poke holes in the doggone thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought I'd put that in because it, it does. It, it uh, goes along with the government takeover, common core. Absolutely, Fred. God bless you and Joyce. And uh, again, you know, Fred, I haven't thanked you for this for a long time, but a long time ago you gave me a book, God Bless America. And I read that book faithfully every morning, and I just wanted to pass that along to you. That's one of the nicest gifts that I've ever had. Well, thank you for uh, reminding me of that. All right. You I forgot I gave you that. <laughs> All right. You take care. Thank you so much. You do the same. All right. Thank you. Bye. Uh, calls are welcome and appreciated. And I really, I guess I'm going to be shocked if people don't respond to this. Whether they're grandparents, whether they're parents, whether they're newly married and going to be parents, this is something that you've got to realize is not just um, some kind of a draconian law that was started over in a foreign country that never happened here in the United States. Don't you bet on it. There are some very insidious, 
very low profiled people that want to sneak in under the doorways like snakes and take control of your children right here in the United States. And to think that the government, th this is what's just blowing my mind, is going to be assigning individuals appointed by the government to go into every single family and be around and study and be a part of every child in Scotland? Oh, my goodness. Please, you've got to respond to that. Give me a call. While I'm waiting for your calls to come in, don't forget Penetron Soil Conditioner by Maisie with a 20-year proven record of increasing yield and quality of all Idaho crops using 30 interactive components, speeding germination, reducing crusting, improving stand, stimulating root growth, and microbial back activity, building soil structure, too, and using less water. This is the key. It uses far, far less water, and the water savings alone will pay for the cost of the product. Penetron on by Maisie. Absolutely better crops, better yields. Increase your crops performance with a proven soil conditioner, Penetron by Maisie, and contact your fertilizer dealer, crop advisor today for Penetron by Maisie. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Hi there. Hi, Chris. Oh, I love what you were saying just a little bit ago, and I uh, would like to make this a, a chance to encourage people in Idaho especially, to think real seriously about the candidates that they're electing. And actually, our primary is the main place to make the decision. No, you're... So, get informed, and we don't need the same old, same old, same old, especially in Idaho. I think we need a new direction. All right, but now let's stick with uh, let's stick right with my my focus point here this morning, Chris. And I, I mm -hmm. hope you understand what I'm saying is because I don't like to get off topic. You're uh, a mom, a grandmother, and you've had quite a, a really great family. Uh, you must be absolutely worried about the uh, potentiality of what this could do to families and children and parents all over the world. Yeah, I I think that. Um Somewhere centuries ago, uh, a gift was given to humanity that parents were the ones who gave birth to these people, these little children, and parents were the ones who were supposed to nurture them. Um, nobody else has the right to make those decisions. Here, let me... Yeah, my husband and I have waited forever for our two darling little granddaughters that we won't have any more. And we are so protective of those little girls. We want nobody meddling in their parents' business. Now, just let me throw this at you uh, for a second. Uh, over in Scotland, with the appointed uh, basic uh, overseer for the children, it's almost saying right up front, isn't it, that parents are guilty, perhaps, of child abuse. Parents are guilty of not being responsible. Parents are guilty of neglect. And so this appointed overseer by the government is going to be in there as a judge, jury, and executioner of what's good, bad, and indifferent for the child. This totally, totally destroys the family situation, not only in this country, but around the world. Well, I can't believe that the people in Scotland are just going to sit there idly and let this happen. Well, they're not. Uh, they started lawsuits and everything, but I am absolutely jaw-dropped because of the fact that their parliament passed it 103 in favor, none against. And it basically said to the rest of the, uh, the Scottish public, we don't care what you want, we don't care who you are as parents, we're going to pass this anyway. Boy, and that's what you get for not paying attention to the people that you put in offices. Amen. I've got a hard break at the bottom of the hour, Chris. Okay. God bless. Thank you Bye -bye. so much. Uh, right now, and I want more calls on this because I, I, I want you to really tell me, amplify your concerns over this. Because here's a stranger appointed by the government that is basically going to oversee the raising, development, education, and everything to do with your child and not you as parents. 
Oh, Travel Loop Supply, 1050 West 203 South of Haber and 4388730. They deliver the goods. And uh, right now they're delivering all the bolts, too, all the metric and standard bolts. And uh, they've got the bolt bins. They've got everything. And don't forget, a lot of wheel lines went up in spaghetti-type formations with that big wing we had not too long ago. And they can help you get all those wheel lines put back together with the levelers and the birdies and the bolts and everything else. So, hey, give them a call. They deliver the goods. Travel Loop Supply, 438 438- Eight seven three zero. It is time for the Capital Press Ag Minute, and the Capital Press Ag Minute is brought to you by our friends with Linux Home Comfort Systems, and of course, that's working through our friends also at Ramsey Heating and Electric at twenty six hundred Overland Avenue in Burley. Call them at six seven eight zero four five nine. Here now, the Capital Press Ag Minute. Today's Ag Minute brought to you by the Capital Press, the West Ag Weekly. All of Mexico may be open to importing fresh U.S. potatoes before June, based on a final rule the Mexican government recently published setting protocols for fresh potato trade between the two countries. The agreement is scheduled for enactment by May 19th. The final rule also provides a framework other potato exporting countries may follow to submit plans to access Mexico. Despite restricting U.S. fresh potato access to within 16 miles of the border since 2003, Mexico has become the number two importer of fresh U.S. spuds. The announcement is the culmination of a decade of work. Industry sources estimate the announcement should eventually result in $100 million in additional annual fresh U.S. table and chipping spud sales. For more agriculture news and information, turn to the West Ag Weekly, the Capital Press, and CapitalPress.com. Well, thank you very much, and don't forget, uh, brought to you by Lennox Home Comfort Systems with our friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Calls are welcome and appreciated. This absolutely is so chilling to me, this story about Big Brother basically just coming in and uh, being able to take over your family. And remember now, if you have a family of three children, there's going to be three overseers that are going to be basically telling each child different things on how to be raised, what to do, what not to eat, etc. And the parents are going to have to sit back and listen to all three overseers. Every child gets an overseer according to the government assignment. Uh, caller, I'll be right there. Don't go away. I want to remind everybody, 42nd Annual Salmon Select Horse and Mule Sale is going to be running April 9th through the 13th. This is so much fun. Uh, Fred Snook and the rest of the crew up there at the Lemhi County Fairgrounds have got something going on every day that's going to be a lot of fun. All kinds of activities. Wolf howling contests, ranch horse competitions, mule packing competition, 4D barrel races, team ropings, church services. Oh, my goodness, it's ripping fun up there in Salmon at the Lemhi County Fairgrounds, 42nd Annual Salmon Select Horse and Mule Sale. You be sure and put that on your calendar. Coming up in a couple of weeks, April 9th through the 13th, up in Salmon. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yeah, good morning, Zeb. You know, it's uh, it's amazing what socialists come up with. But, you know, to be secure in your family and the whole, whole deal is to break the family up. And, of course, teens now have toll-free numbers they can call, and if they get disciplined, they can call family services and you know this is already in place in this country and so it breaks up the family this is all about destroying the family structure and uh, when you break down the family structure and let the state take over you have a totalitarian dictatorship this is exactly what every dictator has tried to do or has done in order to bring about uh, the regime divides families among themselves, you can see that kind of a, a trend in this country uh, with the, with the uh, situation right now. Um, and so discipline, you know, I've always said I've testified before the State Senate uh, Education Committee a few years ago right here in Twin Falls, and I said, you know, what you really need in education is allow the teachers to have some discipline because right now the, the students run the show. Yeah, but wait a minute, wait a minute. There's another thing here too, Adrian. Adrian. Adrian, just a minute. There's another point that needs to be brought out, and I think you will concur with me. 
Uh, there is a faction in this world today, and you've talked about it on my program when you've been a guest on this show, that there are those that are groups of people that want a zero population growth. They want no more children brought into the world. My goodness, Adrian, by having parents be subjected to overseers coming into their home and taking over, you're going to achieve a zero population growth because why would anybody want to become a parent? Why would they want to subject themselves to having an overseer from the government possibly fine, regulate, and possibly even uh, file charges against the parent? Who would want to become a parent under those auspices? Well, you're right, and, and, and that's a really good point. And, and, but it all boils down to the fact that you know, we have a, a Bill of Rights, and uh, you, you think about quartering of troops as part of the Bill of Rights, not to quarter troops. That's uh, one of the reasons my ancestors moved out of France, uh, because they were subjected to that quartering of uh, troops, and basically the, the person that came in there that was appointed by the, the, the government or by the military to come in there, he was lord and master over that house. And basically, these overseers will be the same thing. Absolutely. It's really not different. It's just called a different name. I agree. i got more commercials to do, but I appreciate your viewpoint on this, and I'm glad you called. Thank you so much. You bet. Have a great day. Thanks. You know, uh, folks, every day I get on this program, and I try to do research on different stories that you're not going to hear on the ordinary, quote-unquote, news, CBS, ABC, NBC, CNN, Fox, whatever, and when you read things like this, a U.N. treaty, Scotland assigns overseer to every child, and it passed their parliament, and it's being operated under their national health service. Please, you've got to sit back and say, whoa, whoa wait a minute. We just started Obamacare four years ago. What, uh, what's in that bill that might also create the monitoring of families with government-appointed overseers here in the United States. Well, if they go along with the radical United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, they can do it. You should be scared, not concerned. You should be scared. Calls are welcome, 436-224-4186-927-4587. Yesterday we had to run down to Burley, and on the way, of course, right there at uh, 159 West Highway 30 in Burley, you can go right smack by Barry Equipment and Rental, one of their locations. They've got another location at 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, and also 2331 South Lincoln in Jerome. And we slowed down, and I just looked. I mean, I saw the Doosan heavy uh, loaders and excavators. I saw all the Coyote tracks. I saw all the walker mowers. I mean, listen, what are you waiting for? Buy or rent, it's all there for you. And for whatever work you need to get done this spring, boy, those coyote tractors will get the work done for you. All you have to do is stop in and visit with the folks at Berry Equipment and Rental. They're asking for the opportunity to earn your business. So stop in again. Locations in Twin, Burley, and Jerome. Berry Equipment and Rental with our friends serving you at Berry Equipment and Rental. All right, I, I'm really surprised the phones aren't backed up on this. I'm really surprised the parents aren't calling in or grandparents aren't calling in and saying, whoa, 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 wait a minute, we better make sure that our legislators don't go wacky on us and, and start uh, supporting a bill like this. Well, yes, you should. You should be very concerned about this. And uh, when I look at this, other nations... Other nations around the world are going to start jumping on this bandwagon. You can bet on it. Um, it's going to be under the approval of the United Nations experts, if you want to use that word, to follow in Scotland's shoes. Holy smokes, folks, please be aware, be worried. Uh, give us a call, 436 227 4587 By the way, I just want to throw this out there, and I don't want to beleaguer the fact that um, they still, they being all the governments of the world that are involved in the search for the Malaysian Flight 370, uh, Gina, unless I've missed something, you have not had a story cross the wire this morning that says they found the plane or anything definite with debris uh, associated with the plane. Is that correct? Look, I have not looked, but okay. I can. Check I that phone call for you. because I've got another story I want to ask you about in just a few minutes. Okay. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. Yes. You're talking about taking kids away from their parents. There's a case right here back east somewhere. I can't remember the 
the whole thing about it, the, the names. But they was treating her daughter for a certain disease, and she was doing okay. She was running and skiing and all that kind of stuff. The hospital stepped in, or somebody there stepped in, took the kid away from him, misdiagnosed her. Mm -hmm. Now she's in a wheelchair and yes. can't do a damn thing about it because yeah. they got guards on the house. Yeah. Um, we've seen parents be stepped on. Uh, I know the case you're talking about, and the poor parents were doing the right thing. They were getting the best of treatment, uh, but the government regulatory system stepped in, and you're so right, Al. It happened here in America. And why, Al, let me ask you this. You've been around the horn a couple of times, and you've seen a couple of uh, hog-calling contests in a county fair. Why are people so naive that they think it can't happen here? Because they're gullible. They don't stop and put their heads together and say, well, now, this isn't right. Why are we letting these people do that to that folks' kid when there's worse now than when they first took her over? Amen. She's in a wheelchair. Amen. And she was doing great. Absolutely. And the parents did the right thing by doing what they had done for that child. I'd get the meanest damn lawyer I could find, and I'm telling you what, there would be a hospital and, and law enforcement would be taken to task. I can't argue with that, and I think you will also concur that government regulatory systems and like what's going on in Scotland absolutely can happen here with our children, and we need to be very concerned. You bet you had right. bats and mowed my lawn yesterday. Well, <laughs> I would have too if I wouldn't have had my lawnmower in the shop. Good. That's a good place for it. And that's better than the canal. I know I was going to beat you to it. That was good. <laughs> All right, thanks. See you tomorrow, Thursday. You bet. Lunch punch on Thursday. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. Again? Y yes. I, I wanted to make a point. You know, I, how many times have I said we need to get out of the U.N.? It's not, a, it's not world taxes. It's world court. It's Agenda 21. You know, it's basically... The world United Nations, which is well, from its inception was controlled by communists and socialists, uh, when it was developed in 1945, Alger Hiss was the first Secretary General, later convicted as a communist spy. And uh, so, folks, wake up and smell the coffee. The United Nations is not our friend. And we need to get out of there. Support HR 75. Get hold of Simpson and your congressman and other states. Use your email. You know, the UN is going to be our Lord and Master, and this is just a good example of what is down the road. Yeah, but wait a minute, wait a minute, Adrian, it's not just the United Nations. I think you will also agree that this administration, with Obama and Holder and everybody else, are playing right into the cards being dealt by the United Nations, and we should also be super critical, hypercritical, of Obama to the point of almost trying to impeach this man because he's selling us down the river through these United Nations treaties. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He's going right along with it. And where's Congress? You know, we, we get a little bit of lip service, but nobody stands up and beats on the podium and says, you know, let's let's get realistic, folks. But, you know, I'm, I'm afraid that everybody wants to play, you know, patty on the hands, you know, let's be friends and work across the aisle and all this kind of nonsense. Where's the Constitution? Get it out and read it and read the Bill of Rights along with it. Amen. And uh, this is the pe well, what made this country great. And, and unfortunately, we've gotten so far away from it. People, it's not being taught in the schools. And Common Core is another, you know, uh, you know, picking the the dike, so to speak, of our constitutional republic, folks. And Common Core needs to be stopped, and people really need to be looking into what their kids are being taught. I agree with you. I agree. I've, I've got other calls waiting and a weather forecast, but Adrian, thank you so much for calling back, because that point on the United Nations is absolutely correct. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. He's right. He's preached it for a long time, the United Nations, a very insidious group, a very dangerous group. Good morning, caller. Quickly, you're on the air. Good morning, you said. Yes. Um, my daughter has something to tell you, so hang on a minute. Okay. All right. Go ahead, daughter number one. <laughs> Actually, I'm daughter number two. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. Um, I had a college professor one time that um, gave us a really good description of an expert. And he said that X 
is a has-been. Mm-hmm. Hurt is the sound of a drip under pressure. Right. So an expert is a has-been drip under pressure. Well, I think you're 100% right now. You, how many children do you have? I have three, and then I have three grandchildren. Okay, now, of the children that you have raised, uh, from uh, your standpoint, what would you feel like or how would you react if all of a sudden uh, this was not Scotland, this is the United States, and uh, somebody called and said tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock there's going to be an overseer knock on your door with the government, and that overseer will be your permanent advisor for your children, and you will adhere to everything that person says. What would you do? I would probably meet that person at the door with a gun and tell them to get out of my life. I think I, I think you're a hundred percent right. There has to be an absolute revolt against government intrusion in our lives, and sometimes you can't wait for a ballot box. Absolutely, we have to stand up as a people together. Amen. And our leaders know that they serve us. Amen. Thank you for calling this morning or having mom call. You're welcome. Okay, thank you very much. Uh-huh, bye. Uh, calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Gina, are we coming through okay? It sounds a little scratchy over here. No, sounds fine to okay. me. Could you boost the uh, feed to me just a skosh, which is just a little bit over a touch? I try, but if I boost it too much, we're okay. reaping feedback. Ah, okay. Um, and we're going to do the weather real quick, and then we'll take some more calls. Now, the weather this hour is brought to you by our friends at Butte Irrigation. 116 South, 600 West of Paul, in a brand new location just a little bit north of Kimberly at Red Cap Corner. Oh, my, you can't miss it. They'll get you wet at Butte Irrigation. They've got all the wheel lines, hand lines, main lines, pivots, pumps, everything. But you know what they've really got is a knowledgeable staff that can help you with your irrigation needs. Butte Irrigation in Kimberly and Paul, they will get you wet. Here's Michael Rogers' weather. Hello everyone, Michael Rogers from MichaelRogersWeather.com. We've got a cold front coming through, and uh, it'll be through tomorrow, but so far for today, you broke a record yesterday with t- record high temperatures. You can break one today. 73 for the high, 40 for the overnight low. Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got. There you go, Michael. Thank you very much. Brought to you again by Butte Irrigation and Paul and Kimberly, and they will get you wet. Absolutely. Uh, I thought I heard the cow. Maybe Gina's going to say there isn't a cow. No cow. No cow. Well, that means we've got to have another call. Uh, But I just want to make a point with you, Gina, on this plane real quick before I turn it back to another story. Last night, Bill O'Reilly, I think, stooped as low as a journalist can stoop. You will recall, Gina, because we talked about this on the air, as many talk show hosts did, there was a, uh, a recommendation from government officials for people to think and theorize what could have happened to that flight 370. And people were asked to sit and think about, well, what might have happened here? What might have happened there? Because remember when the plane was missing in the first 48 hours, people had no clue. And a lot of people came up with different theories and different ideas, which opened up schools of thought for a lot of people to look at, dissect, and figure out maybe that had some uh, some credence, and then go on with the search for the airplane. Last night, Bill O'Reilly made a very low, condescending remark to all journalists when he said, I knew it all the time. I knew the plane went down in the Indian Ocean, and all these other people were just uh, making news to be heard and be loud. And I thought Bill O'Reilly last night sold himself down the river for the last time with me to the point where I have no respect for the man. He was j- basically blowing his own horn saying, I told everybody it went down in the Indian Ocean. But the caveat is, don't be tooting your trumpet too loud in your own band, O'Reilly, because still they haven't found the plane. No, they haven't. They haven't found guaranteed debris from the plane. So how can you make a massive statement of I was right, everybody else was wrong, when you don't have proof? Just please tell me that, Gina, because it reeks of being just absolutely all-powerful, all-knowing, and basically pretty stupid. Uh, Well, I don't like the guy. He's all full of ego, and that's the only reason he said it. It was an ego stroke. Yes. It's all about ratings, and that's all he's about. And and he condemned... I I don't watch the guy. I can't stand him. He condemned some very thoughtful and insightful people last night. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I just, I'm sorry, I, I can't watch him. I think he's a e uh, megalomaniac. And I think his ratings are to the point where I would like to see him go into a tailspin like a plane that had the motor quit. And uh, quite frankly, uh, there was a lot of comments that were made last night that were aimed and jaded at uh, Charles Krauthammer, uh, Lieutenant Colonel um, Thomas McInerney, and many others, and uh, myself included, other people, that, you know, there were theories going around as to what possibly could have happened to the plane, and the government was asking for theories so they could investigate these different theories. Mm -hmm. But they still don't know. That's right. They have, they have possible satellite images, but until they can collect that debris, we don't know where the plane is. We don't have any hard facts. We don't have any data. We don't have any pieces of the plane. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this little deal for uh, Lennox, and then i got to tell you about Governor Scott Walker from my own old home state in Wisconsin. You're okay. going to love this, and I want you to put it on my Facebook page, okay? Okay. Okay, we'll be right back. Don't forget, Ramsey Heating and Electric is offering rebates on qualified Lennox home comfort systems. Whether it's a gas furnace, air conditioner, or a heat pump, you and your family will enjoy the comfort. Lennox and Ramsey Heating and Electric at 678-0459, 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, where they provide warm winters and cool summers. Listen to this, Gina. You're not going to believe this story. Uh, Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker has done everything he said he would do for the state of Wisconsin. He's taken them from being so deep in the red financially and put them in the black. Yesterday, all he did on his Facebook page was post this simple little note. Philippians 4.13. Now, that's all he put on there. Now, for those of you that know the Bible, you know that Philippians 4.13 means, I can do anything and everything God asked me to do with the help of Christ, who gives me the strength and power. Well, the atheists have gone nuts. The atheists have started climbing walls. The atheists have started jumping out of trees and trying to jump over riverbeds because they're furious that... A governor would use Philippians 4.13 on his Facebook page, and the atheist said it is a threat to other people. Wait a minute. I can do anything and everything God asked me to with the help of Christ, who gives me the strength and power, is a threat, and the atheists are upset? Let me just say this. I want that put on my Facebook right now. Philippians 4.13. And to anybody out there that's an atheist, listen to me very carefully. Number one, it is your absolutely dubious and very, very doubtful uh, phraseology that always condemns everybody else. You don't want anything done with religion. You want the world cleaned of religion. You want your voice to be heard. Governor Scott Walker never condemned you as atheist. He never said you have to shut up and go sit in the corner. But now it's time for Christians to fight back. I am going to be very vocal against atheists. You want to shoot your mouth off? I'm going to shoot my mouth off. And I'm going to use my bully pulpit here to overrun, override, and run you over. Because of your silly attitude and your faithlessness. So now, we're going to post Philippians 4.13. If you don't like it, have a good day. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. To be dictated to by groups on the left is absolutely insulting to me, and every person should be outraged. I am. Don't forget a great big spring tire sale going on at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Oh, my. All the tires that you could possibly want for your cars, pickup trucks, SUVs. Man, they're on sale. The Proxus 4 Plus. Mm -hmm. Great, great car tire. 47% more tread life, shorter stopping distance, quieter ride. On sale. How about the uh, Open Country AT2 for the light truck tires? Ooh, yeah. On sale. And, of course, they've got custom wheels on sale. They've got the best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries. What are you waiting for? Get in and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, John on Pauline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland and Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Oh, come on. Give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Yeah, I, uh, I, I give kudos 
to Governor Scott Walker of Wisconsin. Absolutely. And he said he's going to keep it on his Facebook. And I'm definitely going to call him after the program at his office in Wisconsin and Madison and just say on behalf of my radio program out in Idaho, we support you and thank you for spitting in the eye of atheists with big mouths that want everything their way. Okay? All right, now it's your turn. Give me a call. Quick, I've got time for a couple more phone calls. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Um, let's see what else have I got here. Obama giving away the Internet. Now, this is where Gina and Deanne and everybody else knows more about this than I do. But I will say this. By Obama trying to give away the Internet to other countries, even former President Bill Clinton said yesterday, no, 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 that's not smart. Here we have a former Democratic president telling a current Democratic president, wait a minute, Obama, you don't know what you're doing. This move will threaten free speech and can start to be a control factor on information. And even, here's what's scary to me, Vladimir Putin wants control of the Internet by the United Nations. Here we go again. Those big dipsticks in the United Nations want more control. And Putin is behind it. He's in, control, he want, he's in favor of control of the Internet. And it seems rather stupid to me that our President Obama is helping other people get something that we have been in control of that assures free speech. Obama, what is the matter with you? This man is the worst president that was ever elected to the United States of America, to sit in the Oval Office. This man is one of the most disgusting, repugnant people against the Constitution, and his entourage of his administration follows in the same suit. Giving away, giving away, making us weaker. And yesterday, while everybody was talking about the buildup of Russian troops on the Ukrainian border, Obama's overseas telling everybody that the United States is weakening its, weakening its military force to be less absolutely stupid and that is the word we'll use for this administration stupid coming up next hour we're going to be talking to Christine Herben Hansen with Americans for Prosperity and boy she's got some information about taxes and tax day we pay they spend and it's ridiculous. And then Casey Givens going to be on at 9.30 this morning. Great young man. Looking forward to having him on the air. 10.06, Dr. History. And then at 10.30 this morning, Senator Lee Hyder is going to be on talking about how come the Times News, all of a sudden, they're the appointed guardian over what senators and congressmen do in the grading system as to whether they're good, bad, or ugly. We're going to talk to him about that later on this morning. I'll be back in six. Don't go away. Oh my, listen to those guitars play our intro for this hour, Zebeth Ranch. And of course, I'm brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you. Excellent, excellent big tire sale going on right now. And then don't forget, too, some of our outstanding advertisers, including Lease Furniture Floors and More at 459 Overland and Burley, and our friends with Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River. You know, we've been talking about Western Way Services with all of their different uh, helpful things for you and your family, your business. Well, don't forget they've got the Go Minis, the portable storage units for contractors, real estate agents, off-site, on-site, everybody right at their home. I mean, these are absolutely fantastic for storage, emergencies, when the disaster strikes, whatever. Check it out today. All you have to do is call them at 734-6969. And uh, you can keep it right on your property. They'll come out and pick it up and store it at their site. The Go Minis with Western Waste Services, 734-6969, always at your disposal. You better believe it. Great, great people. 
Um, oh, boy, great people. Yeah, you know, you're ahead of me. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Joel Heward and his staff and Handsome Mortuary. And by the way, let me thank them uh, for being one of our door prize uh, donors for our Lunch Bunch coming up on Thursday. We really appreciate Joel Heward, owner-manager of Handsome Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert, always providing the families they serve with the best possible support and comfort with the highest of ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. They really care. And they want to meet your expectation, expectations and exceed those expectations. So please call them today and get the pre-planning of funerals that we all should get to help alleviate a lot of the uh, stress and worry for our family. 436-5636. Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert. Well, we're going to go to the phone lines right now and visit with a young lady that has been on our program many, many times in the past, and she is the Americans for Prosperity National Issues Manager and newly married. I say good morning to Christine Harbin Hansen. Good morning, Christine. How are you? Good morning, Zeb. Great to be with you. Uh, okay, I'm going to just say this, Christine. Uh, tax day is coming up again, and uh, we pay, they spend... And I think it's time for us to revolt. I am absolutely adamant that the American public is being absolutely stolen from by the government to the point where they take our money, they spend it on wasteful projects, there is no accountability, and the American taxpayer is left hung out to dry for paying for some stupid little uh, bug to run on a treadmill, and they spend millions and billions of dollars of my money in waste. What can we do as taxpayers to say enough is enough? Well, Zeb, you're right, and I couldn't have said it better myself. You know, government is spending more and more here at the federal level and at the state level, and it's simply not making life better for m millions of Americans. So there's a lot that we can do, um, and, and we're calling on a lot of our AFP activists and uh, in really highlighting how they're upset that spending that their taxes are too high because b government is spending too much. Uh, and so here at Americans for Prosperity, one of the things that we're going to do is highlighting tax day and highlighting the spending message. Uh, so in many of our state chapters, we're going to be having um, some a national day of action. Uh, we're going to wear it. The state director will lead some rallies uh, and then take um, you know take their activists on a door knocking and phone backing and really driving to action um, this spending method. Yeah, but Christine, uh, you're very sharp, or I wouldn't have you on this program. I only have the best of people. Um, but my main question is why. Why are we letting our congressmen, our senators, basically do what they want when they get back on the Potomac? I am ready, seriously, to jump on an airplane, go back there, and just literally force my way into the halls of Congress, get up to the podium and say, and look at each and every one of them in their eyes and say, you are absolutely loathsome to me. I find you to be the bottom of the barrel. You're wasting money as American taxpayers. You've got to tighten up this ship before we go over a Cliff, start being what we hired you to be, and that's absolutely responsible, and nobody's doing that. Well, Zeb, let me know when you come to Washington, because I'd be happy to go to trek up to the Capitol with you. <laughs> I think it's really important uh, to, to tell people, tell elected officials that you're upset about Washington overspending. Uh, there's a lot of things that, that people can do um, that doesn't involve buying a, an expensive plane ticket to here to Washington. Um, just that, swinging by a district office is also very helpful. Uh, sending a note to your elected officials telling them that you're upset about the fact that Washington is squandering your tax dollars. Uh, we try to make it very easy here at Americans for Prosperity. You can take action on a lot of uh, on a lot of a number of issues, including overspending, uh, and that's at actions.americansforprosperity.org. And on spending, I mean, we, as you know, Zeb, we work on a lot of other issues. We, we're very focused on health care and, the, and the, the onerous requirements of the president's health care law. We're concerned about energy and, and uh, you know, the, the agenda of that, uh, uh, from the left and President Obama's uh, allies in Congress to uh, restrict Americans' access to affordable energy. But on spending, uh, you know, that's important, too. So that's, if you go to Americans 
uh, to action.americansforprosperity.org. You can take issue on take action on this issue and many others. Let me ask you this, Christine. Uh, on some of the cheat sheets that I got for our interview this morning, there was one sentence that just stood out and hit me right between the eyes. It said, "Quote: The federal government." spent over 100 billion with a B dollars in taxpayer funds improperly in 2012. Now, wait a minute. I know today a billion isn't a lot of money, according to some people, when we're talking about trillions in debt and getting worse all the time. But when you say 100 billion dollars in taxpayer funds improperly, look at all the good that that money could have done. Look at all the uh, assets that we could have helped flourish in this country with a better use of that money instead of sending it for shrimp on a treadmill. Yeah, the, the 100 billion in improper payments, that statistic raises my eyebrows as well. I think it's alarming, completely alarming, uh, that the government, the federal government is spending so much money uh, as it wasn't intended. A uh, hundred billion dollars a year going to uh, to spend, uh, to food stamps recipients who aren't truly low income. Uh, many of it is spent through health care. Some of the biggest programs uh, on uh, that are that see improper payments are Medicare and Medicaid. So this is very alarming, and you know we hear a lot in here in Washington. You know we hear elected officials say that there's no one else, nowhere else to cut. You know, we saw them, you know, over the past, you know, year and a half, we've seen them, you know, grapple with sequester cuts, or, which were really just a haircut. It's really only like less than 2% of total federal spending. But then when you hear these other, you know, when you actually dig into the line items, and, and there's plenty of waste, fraud, and abuse to cut. And I think improper payments, the $100 billion that we spend on improper payments is should be first on the chopping block. All right, now let's talk a little bit about food stamp usage. Um, in round figures, it, we're looking at about 50 million Americans that are on food stamps right now. And the government is encouraging more people to become on the program. Now, I'm sitting here going, and I agree with some of the states that are trying to get tough on this, uh, that say, wait a minute, before we give you any money, before we give you any food stamps, you're going to have to prove the validity as to whether or not you qualify. Christine, why can't there be a file-by-file, -file, case by case investigation to cut back on the abuse of the American taxpayer? Why not? Well, yeah, first let me be clear. I mean, Americans for Prosperity uh, think, is calling on Congress to, you know, of course, provide a basic safety net for the people who are truly struggling, for the people who are truly low income and truly need it. But we also need to ensure that there are important safeguards for taxpayers. Because, you know, as we all know, uh, with this tax base coming up, Washington is spending more and more. So that's why it's so important to rein in this program, rein in the SNAP program that has been exploding, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, really, it's literally quadrupled um, over the last 10 years, which is very alarming. There's, and, and what we see right now are efforts at the state level to actually um, expand this program to secure more federal dollars. Um, so the conference report on the farm bill that Congress recently agreed to attempted to restrict one of the loopholes that states use do that, that states use to um, secure more food stamp dollars. But what we're seeing right now, uh, you know, only you know less than two months out uh, from the you know when that deal was signed, when President Obama signed the farm bill conference report uh, into law, we see a lot of state-based efforts to expanded even further. They're just undermining a lot of the, of the reform uh, that the Farm Bill Conference Report had in this area of food stamps. What's it going to take, though, Christine? And I know you're going to look at the telephone and say, oh, boy, there goes that Idaho radical again. But what's it going to take? Is it going to take a uh, very large number of Americans all of a sudden on tax day to say, nope, I'm not going to pay my taxes until I hear from my congressmen and senators that absolutely there's going to be a cutback in spending. I mean, we've got to take some kind of measures. We've got to take some kind of power into our hands because these people do not know the value of a dollar bill. Well, I think it's, it's important to, take, to make some noise about this. I think it's, um, you know, people are... are 
paying their taxes. They're, you know, I'm a last minute filer. I always wait till the last day. So I'm going to be doing my taxes on, on the Saturday to beforehand as well. And so, you know, I'm, I, I have this sense of unease. I'm dreading it. I know that April 15th is approaching. I'm already upset about Washington overspending. I'm already upset about the amount of money of my hard earned tax dollars that I'm sending to, you know, the Commonwealth of Virginia here and also uh, to the federal government here in D.C. And people are watching. You know, the great thing about, or the, the curious thing about um, this year's tax day is the fact that most federal lawmakers will be in their home districts. Uh, very few people, you know, Congress is, will be out of session in the middle of April. That means that it's very easy to... Um, or there's a greater chance that you can be able to catch your member of Congress and let him or her know that you're upset with Washington overspending. But, Christine, have we reached a point in this country, according to the gra graphs and the charts and everything else that you have back there in your office, <clears throat> excuse me, have we reached a point in our society to where we've got so many people with their hands out, gimme, 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 I want, I want, I want, and then they'll become subservient to the government. They'll never speak up against the hand that's feeding them. Is that where we're at right now today? Oh, I think I worry that we're very close. I don't. I I chat with the, our state directors um, constantly, and one of the things that I hear from them is that there's this growing grassroots enthusiasm uh, to cut spending. To to the people are upset about taxes. They're upset about uh, the the amount of you know wasteful uh, and fraudulent and abusive spending that you know their elected officials are, are spending. And I think the tides are starting to change. There is some public opinion shift. I think people are beginning to wake up uh, that this can't go on indefinitely. Uh, our elected officials can't continue to kick this proverbial can down the road. Um, however, it's, gonna, it's going to take um, more than that. We're going to have to reach other people. We are going to have to educate uh, many elected officials, many of our friends and neighbors, uh, that Washington overspending is a problem and things need to change. When you listen to the likes of Chuck Schumer and Dick Durbin and others on the left side, the Democratic side of the aisle, and they say stupid, frivolous things like, well, we don't have a spending problem, we've got a revenue problem, we need more revenue to create more projects to help build the government and build the country. These people absolutely believe in spend, 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 spend. They don't know anything about cutting back and trying to live within the means of a budget. How do you, as Americans for Prosperity, try to get inside their heads and tell them they're all a bunch of nimrods? <laughs> well, one of the things that we find is very persuasive is pointing to the president's record. You know, the, pre the Obama administration has tried, ever since he took office, um, the stimulus spending as a way to bring us out, you know, the, the, bring the economy back. Um, running again. Um, but what we've seen is that, uh, you know, over the course of his administration, that stimulus spending simply doesn't work. Uh, instead, what we're left is uh, we continue to see uh, people are still struggling to find a job. Uh, economic growth is still slow. Uh, we're, you know, we're not seeing uh, the, the progress the economic progress that we were promised with uh, with the stimulus spending. So I think it's really important to compare promises with results. And so we hear from, you know, the White House and on Congress um, a lot of wishful thinking on these, um, on these stimulus projects. But when you actually look at the reality, when you actually see, you know, when you actually look back and see the results, um, they usually fail to live up to their expectations. We've got three more years of this administration, and then I'm really tentative and very, very cautious about what's going to happen after that, especially if Hillary gets in there as president. I don't see anybody with a spendthrift attitude. What about you? What about your organization? I mean, are, are you basically preparing for doom and gloom, or are there bright spots at the end of the tunnel? One of the things that we do here at Americans for Prosperity is holding people accountable for their bad votes. Uh, and we do that on health care and spending and on energy. Uh, and one, uh, when we hold people accountable, we highlight people who, uh, elected officials who took, who voted the wrong way on spending. But we also thank a lot of people who are voting the right way. And although we saw many uh, Big spending bills come through Congress uh, and get signed into law earlier this year. And here I'm referencing the Ryan Murray budget deal, and I'm also referencing the Farm Bill conference report. 
Um, although we saw a number of really big bills, we did see some members stand up and do the right thing. And so at Americans for Press Ready, we try to applaud them for their efforts. Unfortunately, there are many people, there, there's a bipartisan and widespread willingness um, to, you know, just promote and proliferate this reckless uh, spending. Um, so we certainly have our, our, our work cut out for us. But that's why it's so important for Americans for Prosperity grassroots activists. I mean, there's over 2.6 million living in all 50 states. Why can't um, we, the American... paying attention. Why can't we, the American public, somehow, somehow demand that, like in the case of Obamacare and other pork-ridden bills, that we know up front, A, B, B, C, D, E, F, whatever those uh, different categories are as to where money's going to go that has nothing to do with health care. It might go into, like I used earlier, uh, the shrimp on a treadmill type thing. We need to know where the money's going. We need to know why the money's being spent. And we need to have the right as taxpayers of this great country to say no and absolutely no and clean up your act change that bill and make it more pliable for the American public's good. We just don't have any power anymore. Well, I, I disagree. I think Americans have more power than they, you know, especially at the grassroots level, probably more than they ever did before. Um, I think there's a number of things where, you know, I mean, it's not too late. There are a number of things that Washington can do uh, to get its fiscal house in order. And one of the reforms that we've been calling for here at Americans for Prosperity that would be that Congress could implement right now is to... Re to go through regular order in the federal budget process. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a year-long process uh, that you know, you know, that enables every member of Congress to submit amendments in a very transparent way, and it allows people back home to see what people are voting on, see where these line items are going. Uh, that's how it's supposed to work. But unfortunately, what we've seen over the past decade or so is really a, to a complete breakdown in this budget process. Uh, so if, if members of Congress were just willing to live up to their spending agreements like they did and to, you know, in the Budget Control Act and go through regular budget order, I think we would be in much better shape. Well, a final thought for you this morning, Christine, and I'm not trying to paint you into a corner, but I think this is a worthy question. Would term limits on politicians back on the Potomac be a better usage of our money and not cause so much bloat and so much abuse? That's, an, that's a curious reform. I've heard a number of arguments in favor, um, you know, on both sides of this. Um, I guess I haven't done enough research to really say for sure whether term limits would be the best way to rein in Washington spending. I think there are a number of things that we could do um, in, a, in a nearer term, like returning a regular budget order uh, and to, in order to fix Washington's finances. And then maybe we can go and, and consider term limits. Uh, mm. But I think, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that our elected need, officials need to put all options on the table at this point. Absolutely. Well, you did it again. Great job, Christine Harbin Hansen, Americans for Prosperity. I thank you so much for coming on the program this morning. And we'll certainly look to, uh, forward to having you back in the future. We have a quick phone call for her. Oh, we have a quick call with a question. Don't hang up, Christine. Good morning, caller. You're on the air real fast. Yes, I know you have to be quick. You know, this may or may not apply to you exactly, but if you could just answer. Uh, I heard that the China was uh, considering buying the Federal Reserve, and then also uh, if, if, if the dollar continues to drop in value, it will no longer be the reserve currency of the world. And I just was to have a comment. Thank you. All right, Christine, would you respond to that, please? Yeah, definitely. Well, monetary um, issues and international issues are two things that we don't, they're outside of our policy purview here. Here at Americans for Prosperity, we focus on domestic economic policy. However, I will say there is a bill that's uh, moving through Congress right now on um, uh, r related to the Federal Reserve, but it's, it's uh, false that China is going is proposing to buy the Federal Reserve at this point. All right. Well, uh, it's a very nuanced issue, one that we don't work on, but um, the, the, that's not exactly true. Well, they might not have to buy it. We might have to sign it over to them for all the money we owe them. <laughs> Christine, God bless you, and thank you for being on the program. Christine Harbin Hansen, Americans for Prosperity, and we'll call you in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much. Sounds great.
All right, take care. Thank you. Very interesting tax day coming up, and the government just keeps spending and spending and spending. And you and I, the taxpayers, we just sit back in the corner like a whip dog and say, okay, just do your thing. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. You know, I want to talk to you just for a moment, if I can, about uh, your insurance coverage. Have you honestly sat down at the kitchen table with your spouse or your business associates and said, whoa, wait a minute, you know something? We haven't talked about life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits. And here we are. We better call the people that know, the pros, Dean and Todd. Dean Cameron, Todd Siemens, dedicated and very responsive to your needs. Give them a call today and let them help you at Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert, the number, write the number down, 436-4424, Cameron and Siemens Insurance. Oh, by the way, I've uh, been getting a lot of interest and a lot of calls about the happening up at uh, Salmon, Idaho on April 9th through the 13th. Oh, my goodness, the 42nd Annual Salmon Select Horse and Mule Sale is going to be outstanding at the Lemhi County Fairgrounds. My buddy Fred Snook, and every single day they're going to have just a, a plethora of different things to do. I mean, they're going to have commercial buildings and booths, and they're going to have social hours, and they're going to have ranch horse competitions and mule packing competitions, barrel racing, 40 barrel racing, team ropings, mule competition. <gasps> Woo! I mean, it's all crammed into Wednesday through Sunday, April 9th through the 13th at the Lemhi County Fairgrounds with Fred Snook and the crew, the 42nd annual Salmon Select Horse and Mule Sale. Don't you miss it. Deanna and I are going to try to run up there. It is going to be a happening. It's a lot of fun. All right, give us a call. In just a minute, we're going to have Casey Givens on the program, and I want to take just a moment of my time here and say thank you again to our dear friends at Lee's Furniture Floors and more, Jason and and uh, Brent and everybody over there, so helpful with all the carpet. Now, they've got all kinds of carpet for you. You know, like if you're looking in an area where you don't want to put a whole bunch of real fancy carpet in, they've got good carpet for that area. Maybe you're looking at a better area that you want to put a little better carpet in, and then maybe your best area. Oh my, they've got good, better, and best. Always the best of everything at Lee's Furniture Floors and more. Vinyl flooring, all the furniture, all the accessories, all the lamps, all the bedroom sets, all the mattresses. What are you waiting for? Get in there today. It's the anniversary spectacular at Lee's Furniture Floors and more at 459 Overland and Burley. Lee's Furniture serving you. You know, real quick, too, before we get Casey on the phone, I want to remind you about Ramsey Heating and Electric. And in association with Lennox Home Comfort Systems, they can help you with gas furnaces, air conditioners, and heat pumps. Your family will enjoy the comfort. So will you. Call 678-0459 and talk to Ramsey Heating and Electric about Lennox. And don't forget, at Ramsey's, they sell warm winters and cool summers. Really good folks. Let's go to the phone lines right now, and here's a young man that is one of the sharpest young guys I've known in a long time, and, uh, oh, I just got a text, <laughs> pretty good timing, Casey isn't answering. That's not a good sign. Can we keep trying him, Gina, if you would, yeah, please? I'll keep trying. Okay, because he's aware that at 930 he's supposed to be on the program, and I think I gave you the right number. That's the only one I yeah. have. Yeah, I, I went through and I looked through all my records. It's the correct number. Okay. I'm glad I didn't goof up. All right, so we'll take some calls. Give me a jingle. Earlier this hour, we talked about Scotland in a very sinister, dangerous law that they passed in Scotland. Pardon me? He called. I've got him on the line. Oh, good girl. Thank you very much. Well, we'll revert back to plan A. Ladies and gentlemen, he is in his office, and he is ready to go. One of the sharpest young guys I've had on my program in a long time. Good morning, Casey Givens. How are you? Good morning, Zeb. Great to be here with you. You scared me. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. I'm having trouble with my phone. For some reason, it doesn't ring sometimes. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, in the process of that happening, build a big fire and send smoke signals, and we'll try to get you on the air. <laughs> hey, Casey, what are we going to talk about this morning? I know we had kind of a quick conversation yesterday. What's the topic of information for this morning? Well, the topic of information is actually one um, case that's being um, heard in the Supreme Court right now that will, could essentially ter determine part of Obamacare's fate. Um, it is a case called Hobby Lobby in which uh, 
the Hobby Lobby Hobby Store is challenging Obamacare's uh, mandates that employers provide uh, provide plans to their employees that include um, contraceptives, the morning after pill. Um, so the Hobby Lobby store is a religious organization that, for a long time since their founding, has um, has operated their business on religious on um, religious principles, on um, conservative Baptist principles. So they've objected to Obamacare's contraceptive mandate that. That employers um, that employers must provide contraceptives to their employees as part of their health care. Mm-hmm. So right now, the Supreme Court is hearing whether whether federal law protects their religious rights to not to not um, provide such care to their employees based on religious objection. You know, Casey, I got to be honest with you. I've I've been following this story, and I've been following other stories about Christian businesses and attitudes, and I am really starting to become worried in this country that myself as a Christian uh, and others are being thwarted by the government, being told what we can and can't do, and being told that our religious beliefs don't matter. And that's what's happening with Hobby Lobby and other businesses. It looks like this administration more so than ever before is putting thumbs down on Christianity and Christian run businesses am I wrong um, absolutely not Zeb. and the thing is with this case is that federal law protects religious businesses such as Hobby Lobby to not to not um, be forced to provide such contraceptives uh, there was there's a bill in the 90s under the Clinton administration that passed called the religious Freedom Act and that's really the the, the point of the issue at point right here is that it protects businesses who believe that their free, their religious beliefs, their Christian religious beliefs, are being violated from federal law. Um, it protects them from from um, being forced by the government to do something that they that they believe violates their conscience. So yes, unfortunately, under the Obama administration, under Obamacare, it seems like the religious rights of such Christian businesses are under attack. Casey, why, and and you know more about this than I do because you study this every day, but why is the Obama administration so, pardon the expression, hell-bent on destroying uh, Christian businesses, but at the same time, they will make allowances under the table for other people to get away from and out of Obamacare and its restrictions? It just seems like it's not fair whatsoever. I mean, Zeb, if you really look down at the root, at the root motivation, it's really who are Obama's cronies, you know? Um, so certainly, um, he as a progressive um, Demo- Democrat has interest in, um, say, unions and other, and other um, Democratic liberal causes. So that's why we see with Obamacare that there's, that there's being exemptions being handed out like candy to, to unions, to, um, to our po- politicians, to our elected officials on the Hill, um, but not to other, uh, to, but not to other interests that are really on the opposite, are seen as on the opposite side of the aisle. Um, conservative religious interests. So I think that's really the motivation behind that is that uh, is that the Obama administration really ha- wins nothing by by um, by uh, handing out these uh, by handing out these exemptions by protecting the religious freedom of more conservative of more uh, conservative interests. But unfortunately, that comes at the cost of violating the constitutional religious freedoms that Americans, like the Hobby Lobby folks, are entitled to. Uh, in your opinion, uh, Casey, when you look at Hobby Lobby and all the people that work for that company, and there are other companies, furniture companies, that have had the same problems with their religious beliefs uh, against Obamacare, what's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? Who's Is the government going to play a uh, big bully and they're going to force everybody to do this like they're forcing other people to accept gay and lesbian and transgender rights when uh, businesses don't want to have a part of it? Look at what what happened in New Mexico with the lane photography? They didn't want to shoot a gay wedding, and they very politely backed out. And then the gays sued them. I mean, this country is upside down with the uh, anti rights against Christians. Yeah, well, we'll certainly see with with the Supreme Court what what comes out of this case. But you know, as we all know, Zeb, that we can't really rely on the Supreme Court to, to uh, make the right constitutional decision every single time. But I think, you know, there's really, there's, there's the court of law and then there's the court of public opinion. 
And I think that certainly if the court fails us today, there can certainly be, um, a, you know, citizens, concerned citizens can exercise their free speech and stand up for the religious rights that they are entitled to. So I think that um, even if all else fails today, that um, the Hobby Lobby folks and um, and their sympathizers can can really get behind and urge their elected officials um, to to change the law and perhaps add as add an add an amendment to Obamacare to protect their religious liberties. And certainly, it may seem bleak right now with with kind of a mixed Congress and a Democratic president. But you never know. The next ele- election cycle is just around the corner. And there could come a time when it could be more plausible to get these uh, religious freedom and act uh, uh, protections in place. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna argue with you a little bit and disagree, Casey, respectfully. I don't think that companies like Hobby Lobby and others can challenge this over the long haul and economically foot the bill for their legal uh, protection, economically stay in business, and economically pay the fines, I think they're going to all be pushed into the barrel pit and run over. I don't think they have the time to wait for maybe changes on the Supreme Court. Yeah, you know, you're, you're probably right, Seb. In fact, that's one of the things um, uh, that Hobby Lobby is really objecting to, is that it would cost them millions of dollars per year and and um, do, and d- paying these uh, fines, to, these fines that Obamacare imposes on them for not providing such contraceptives to their employees. So, I mean, it really is urgent, and um, hopefully, there can be an urgent reaction if the Supreme Court doesn't uphold their religious freedoms. But you know, it, it is truthfully pretty bleak. <laughs> Uh, Casey, whatever happened to the philosophy that you see on a lot of restaurant doors, etc., that says uh, we re- we reserve the right to refuse service, no shoot, no no shirt, no shoes, no service, etc. What happened to the first right of refusal in this country? If a business doesn't want to be a part of something, they can respectfully say no, thank you. But if you'll go down the street and talk to so and so, they might be able to help you. Why can't a business have that right? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, that that is another major issue. These uh, non-discrimination laws that are really con- that are really cropping up across the country, and um, as you mentioned, businesses should absolutely have have the, the fundamental right to accept or refuse businesses uh, business from customers depending on their prerogative. And really, so um, and 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 really, it, it should be a state's right issues. And before um, the the Civil Rights Act, it was really determined up to the states about about um about um who they can or cannot refuse refuse business to but ever since the civil rights act the 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 title seven of the act has really expanded um the definition of these non-discrimination so so federal law is basically for you know almost every type of conceivable race class gender um requires businesses today to to accept accept uh these businesses to accept customers now there's still a little bit of freedom, um, certainly with um, with um, LGBT, LGBT people, gay people. St- um, that's still not in the Civil Rights Act. So states have um, the prerogative to to decide whether to force their businesses to to accept accept um, the gay customers. But really, I mean, it should be it fundamentally be up to the businesses as their as um, their owners of their own property to determine who they can or cannot serve based on if they think that they're a worthy customer. Well, and you know, when you talk about this, uh, these groups like the gays, lesbians, and transgenders, and they're demanding of certain things, they're demanding of special rights. Uh, we had a circumstance before our state legislature in this session to where they were demanding to add words that they thought were going to help against discrimination. You know, there isn't any such thing in real estate or anything else as far as discrimination is concern all these groups want all these people want are special privileges that give them special rights over and above everybody else so that basically they're a protected species and i'm fed up with it casey certainly and you know the thing really the funny thing is that it really hurts their cause because i think that it really creates more of a, a greater backlash to to tell businesses that they are forced to serve you Instead of just, um, you know, simply not associating them and uh, with them and exercising uh, through their spe- free speech their their views, so I really think that um, not only does it violate businesses' fundamental right to use their property as they see fit, 
but ironically, it, it hurts it hurts gays at the same time. It's a lose lose. You know, you were responsible uh, a couple of weeks ago for lining up one of the young millennials. I think it was at, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was at St. John's College or St. John's University back in New York, and that gentleman was very, very good. You yourself are a young man uh, doing very well in the United States, and I'm proud to have you on this program. But young people in general, are they seeing through the smoke in the mirrors of this administration and realizing that by the time this man's out of office, Obama, that they could be seeing a $21 trillion debt with no hope of ever balancing the books, and they're looking at a weakening of America, they're looking at a moral fabric of America going down the drain, and they're seeing people that want to twist and turn and tear up the Constitution. Are they becoming aware of what's happening? You know, uh, Zeb, I, I really think they do, and I know that <laughs> with a lot of guests I, I put for you on the show, we really do end optimistically, and, and I'm going to end optimistically myself in that I think uh, working for an organization focused on young people, there really is a shifting opinion in the youth um, uh, so in the youth about the Obama administration and about what the federal government is doing. I mean, we see this not just in, um, you know, a, a growing libertarian and, and conservative uh, student movement, but also even among liberals, uh, uh, liberal, traditional liberal progressive students. We see poll after poll uh, is showing that, um, that young liberals are, being, are getting fed up with Obama and, and his broken promises. And so I really think that there is going to be a, a shift among the youth towards towards ideas of more uh, liberty and and freedom. So um, I I certainly think so, and uh, and I really think that the hope is in the youth. I appreciate you, my friend, for being on the air with me this morning, Casey Gibbons. Sharp young guy, and when you decide to run for president, you'll get my vote. Casey, God bless you, man. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks so much, Seb. All right, take care. Thank you very much. You know, when you listen to people like Casey, and then that young man I had on the air from New York at uh, St. John's University here about a week ago, and you hear the thoughts, the in-depth thoughts about we've got to protect our Constitution, we've got to protect capitalism, we've got to protect what this country stands for, all of a sudden you throw up your hands and you go, whoa, there is hope. There is hope. And the younger people are starting to see the insidious means that the liberals and the Democrats are trying to do to tear apart this country. There is hope. Well, we're going to have a little weather forecast right now. And then I'll take some more of your calls. And uh, the weather this hour brought to you by Red's Trading Post, 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls. Telephone number to call, 733-3546. Don't forget, when you purchase a firearm from Red's Trading Post, and you'll receive training bucks. Now, what are those? Well, they can be used for LMS defense and Shaw shooting. to use in their rifle and pistol training courses. So please stop in and see the friends at Red's Trading Post today. Guns ammo and accessories red trading post in twin falls here's michael rogers with the weather hello everyone michael rogers from michael rogers weather.com got a cold front coming through and uh it'll be through tomorrow but so far for today you broke a record yesterday with record high temperatures you can break one today 73 for the high 40 for the overnight low Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got. There you go, Michael. Thank you very much. Again, brought to you by our friends at Red's Trading Post, 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls. Um, I don't know how many of you read the paper this morning, the Times News, but on the front page headline, it says, Haley Rancher Kills Alleged Colt Killing Wolf. In case you're not aware of the story, I'll give a real rough synopsis. Uh, a wolf in the Haley area had come down and killed a very, very cute, pretty little colt that belonged to the Swigert family. And uh, the Swigerts naturally were going to do anything and everything they could to make sure that didn't happen again. And then on days after that, the wolf came back and uh, molested their two dogs and uh, uh, beat them up, chewed them up severely. And so uh, both the Swigerts, husband and wife, made a point to make sure that this wolf would not live to see another sunrise. And they got him. And I commend them for their dedication. I commend them for uh, going after this wolf. And I, I know that the wolf lovers out there in the audience, they're just going to sit back and cringe. Another wolf died. Oh, no. 
I wish that could be said for about another 500 of them here in the state of Idaho. You've heard my dear friend Jack Euler many, many times on this program, and uh, the agreement has been breached by the environmentalists. The agreement never was an agreement with them. They lied, cheated, and basically stole from the agreement. The agreement of 10 breeding pairs, 100 wolves, has been multiplied possibly well over 10 times, which puts the wolves well over 1,000 here in the state of Idaho. And every time we have a wolf hunt, every time we have management mentioned, then, of course, these wolf lovers come come out of the woods, the trees, the snowbanks, and cry, Oh, we can't! we got to save the wolf! And they start using their unlimited checkbooks and also their lawyers to try to fight against it. And I'll say this, and I mean this. I wish that this morning we could go out and keep the number right at what is necessary with the agreement. Now, I will admit that probably we better keep the numbers maybe a shade, maybe on top of that, maybe about two to 300 wolves fine. But when you get up in the numbers that are creating the problems that they are now with wildlife and also domestic animals, I don't care if they shoot 500. That would probably leave at least 300 left. But you know, the, the thing that has to be done is shoot, shovel, and shut up. Let's not brag. Let's not talk about it. Just carry a little army shovel with you, bury him, and let it go. But we have to have management on these killer predators. And that's what they are. Calls welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. And I'll be expecting your call, so give me a jingle right now as I'll do this commercial. Let's ride Highway 24 between Rupert and Burley. Open Tuesdays through Saturdays from 9 to 6. And you better make sure you don't forget about snow check on your snow machines. That's right, April 22nd is going to be the last day for snow check. What you do is you choose your sled, choose your color, choose your options, customize your snow machine the way you want it. $500 down, it's going to bring in the machine just like you ordered. You check it out, and don't forget all the ATVs are there. Oh, my goodness, they've got them all. Uh, it's just open that front door and walk in that showroom, and you're going to go, Woo, we have never seen so many ATVs in my life and all the accessories, and they've got the watercraft coming in every day. It is where you can have fun. Fun is sold right there at Let's Ride, Highway 24, between Rupert and Burley, open 9 to 6, Tuesdays through Saturdays. Well, Gina, how come the cow isn't mooing? What's going on over there? Gina's gone. <laughs> I'm all alone on a deserted island with sharks swimming around the perimeter of the sandy shoals, and Gina's don't, gone. Don't, oh, don't, there you are. Don't, don't, no, I, was, I had to go grab my headphones from the other room. I've been multitasking. Don't you hate that when you have to chase down a set of headphones? I do. Usually I have two, but somebody was kind enough to blow my other pair. You know, I keep going back to the story we had the first hour, and I keep thinking about you and your boy Kennedy. Yes. Uh, single mom situation and, and all of a sudden like if you lived over in Scotland and the government said uh, Ms. Jameson you will be home at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon because the government assigned overseer will be there to tell you how to raise your child and what to do I can just see a real big fight on the front lawn yeah. there would be a real big fight and one thing that I was reading in that news story is did you know that the US, US Senate the United States Senate can ratify that U.N. treaty, yep. Yep. but they just refuse to do so? Yep, absolutely. It makes me angry. Thankfully that this particular uh, case or this particular law ha is being challenged in court in Scotland, and so I hope that uh, it's overturned. Yeah, but, you know, here's the thing. When you have what happened over in Scotland, and I've had some calls already this morning during the news breaks about this, it passed 103 in favor and none against. So it basically tells you that regardless of all the teachers, all the parents, all the religious experts, everybody that called and complained and absolutely was upset about it, the government government, their parliament, went ahead and voted it in to be in coincidement with the uh, United Nations. They didn't care what the private citizenry said. Well, you know, and don't they elect their leaders? Don't they go through the election process the same that we do? And there may be a lot of people that might be unhoused. Yeah, un uh, looking for a new job. Absolutely. I'm sorry, that's if our elected officials, which they have already done, 
uh, win against us, I can guarantee you that uh, a lot of them are not going to have jobs in the next election. But when you talk about the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, now that right there, that leaves me a little bit more than cold because here's Kennedy, six years old, right? Right. Uh, you, you tell me what rights, quote unquote, that that boy has right now. Go ahead, Mom. Tell me what rights he has that you, as a parent, aren't giving him. Um, he has no rights. There, <laughs> there you go. There you go. I do. There you go. Phone call real quick. All right, we'll take that call. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, it makes me ashamed to have Scottish blood in me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well. And, uh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Alias. Uh, that's fine. Go ahead, please. And uh, as far as uh, their legislature goes, ours isn't any better than theirs. Look what ours did. We voted for term limits, and we're not smart enough, and they uh, canceled it. You know, when you look at this situation over in Scotland, and, and I'm glad you called on this, because I think a lot of people are naive and not well-informed enough to realize that, sure, they might say it's over in Scotland, but it can happen here so easy underneath the guise of a United Nations convention and their bill, the rights of the child. What's to say that Scotland's running this through their national health service plan? What's to say that it wouldn't be run through Obamacare? Oh, that's, I'm sure he has plans on doing it. Are you as concerned about this story as I am? When I read this story, it just left me cold. Well, yeah, it's just completely ludicrous is I mean it's talk about government control my god it's time to run them all down I agree I agree well don't revoke your Scottish blood because there's a lot of good people that are Scottish it just seems like some of the dumb ones are in the parliament thank you for your call as always I appreciate it Okay, thank you. Hey, don't forget, we got time for another phone call, but I want to remind you, too, the Chadwick Sports Grill. Oh, man, I, I still go back, and I enjoy that Philly cheesesteak sandwich I had there. I, it's just really good. But today, today for a special at the Chadwick Grill, they've got uh, Pasta Primavera. I hope I said that right. Pasta Primavera, Primavera. Well, whichever. I said it both ways. With garlic toast and super salad, it is good. Food's always good. Service is always fantastic. You're going to love the people at 139 West Main in Burley, the Chadwick Sports Grill. You stop in and see them today. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Hi there. I uh, wanted to remind the people who are listening out there that if they're my age, their parents were fighting the Second World War to keep us free, and since then we have dropped the ball. We better remember what was done on our behalf. Now, Chris, I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit, and all of a sudden, if this bill were passed underneath Obamacare, like it has been over in Scotland with the National Health Service, what would you do, how would you react if all of a sudden you're taking care of your grandkids and somebody knocks on the door and says, Hello, Mrs. Hondo, you're not in charge anymore. I am. Well, they'd, have to, they'd pretty much have to kill me to take my grandkids away from me. Um, I feel that strongly about the fact that the family is in charge. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, when you say that this person, this person has the right now in Scotland to come in and intervene in family decisions, though those are key words right there, intervene in family decisions without the consent of parents. I mean, you could be talking about the child's diet. You could be talking about the child's uh, education. You could be talking about what they wear to school. The parents have to sit there and say nothing. Well, I cannot believe that the Scottish people are so naive or so laid back. Because in the past, they've been pretty rip and tough people to deal with. I am appalled that the, uh, the parliament over there passed that uh, with no uh, person voting against it. And even at the point where all the teachers, all the religious leaders, everybody was absolutely adamant, no, don't pass this, they did it anyway, which just kind of uh, slaps you in the face and says the big government's going to do what they want to do. Well, those people in Scotland just need to withhold their taxes. 
Amen. You know, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again, Chris, and I think you'll understand. There are times in every government, in every country, where the people have got to say enough is enough, and they got to do something that's going to get the attention of these people that are abusing their powers. Yeah, and spending their money all wrong. Amen. And I think Americans may have to do that, too. Amen. God bless you for your call. I appreciate it again. Thank you. Bye-bye. All righty. We're going to take a little break right now. I'm going to try to take a blood pressure pill and sit back and relax. And um, we're going to come up next hour at 10.06. We've got Dr. History. I always look forward to Dr. History and his stories. He told me yesterday what it's going to be about, and I can't remember. My mind went blank. And then at 10.30 this morning, very interesting conversation with Senator Lee. Lee Hyder, and we're going to be talking about, uh, in Sunday's newspaper, the Times News, they came out with a grading system of all the different senators and congressmen in the state of Idaho, and for some reason they think they're Solomon at the Times News, and they have the right to tell who did a good job and who did a bad job. We're going to talk to Lee about that coming up at 10.30 this morning. Stay tuned. Zeb at the Ranch. I'll be back in six. Don't go away. Nope. Don't think it's a good idea. Go too fast anyway. Zeb at the Ranch, I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers. And we say thank you very much to Lee's Furniture Floors and More at 459 Overland in Burley, and also our thanks to Western Way Services. Always at your disposal. Get on the route service today. Call 734-6969. Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. What does that bring us? Well, I'll tell you what. Standing in the shadows right now, over there behind that tree, jotting notes down as to what's happening for historical record, here's Dr. History. Good morning, Zeb. How you doing this morning? Well, I tell you what, it's good to have you on the program this morning. I know you always have uh, really well thought out stories that you're going to tell us about. And what is on the menu for today? Well, I'm going to tell you about uh, an amazing athlete okay. that I'm sure nobody has ever heard of. Uh, I'd be surprised. Okay, it's not Michael Jordan. Not Michael Jordan, but in the same rankings as Michael Jordan. Really? Yeah. Okay. Mose Burris. Oh, I remember good old Mose. Yeah, he used to be able to throw a knuckleball and a curveball. He was a pretty good pitcher. Okay, well, you're sort of close. Oh. There is a ball involved, but not throwing it with your hand. Huh. Mose Burris, he was a Choctaw Indian, and he was the stickball champion. Like I say, he was kind of like the Michael Jordan uh, stickball among the Indians. Oh, my. So uh, that's the story today. So I'm going to kind of give a play-by-play of what happened in one particular game. Uh, between the Choctaws and the Chickasaws. Okay. Okay. So here we go. If you're, I want you to picture yourself standing on the sidelines uh, with all the cheering of the Indian women and men. A ball shoots straight towards a goal post and goes in the goal. Wild hoops and yells from the spectators. The referee goes and gets the ball and carries it to the middle ground. There's a bunch of sweating, athletic Indians uh, crowding around him, ready for action. Okay, so this is the scene one day a long time ago when two feuding teams battled, just like Burley Minico or any other, uh, uh, you know, feuding teams do. So we have the Cole County Chickasaws were playing the Atoka County Choctaws in what might be called... Today, we'd call it the World Series of Indian Stickball. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, the athlete who'd made, just made this first goal was a Husky Choctaw Indian by the name of Mose Burris. And that's who I'm going to talk about. Okay. Uh, Mose Burris. Each time he stepped on the field at the beginning of a contest, he received a whole bunch of applause and yells and cheering from his fans and just the opposite type of cheering from the other team's fans. Mm -hmm. They hated him. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, he was a great player, and uh, in fact, a lot of the other players, they were out to get him, basically. Uh -oh. So, and as I go along, you'll understand what I mean by get him. Okay. So, so Mose uh, was uh, the only one of ten players who, at this point, he'd made a goal. He was standing out in the, uh, on the field ready, and 
you know, he just kind of stood there kind of lackadaisical, just not really straining to burst into action. He just kind of stood there relaxed. But uh, all of the other athletes on the field were fully aware of this man's skill because they'd been in contests before where they played against him. So it wasn't new what he could do. So he was kind of like a clever boxer in one way because he just kind of stood there, just kind of easy going, not telegraphing what his intentions were. But inside, he was like a volcano ready to erupt. He was ready to blow. And uh, it had just exploded a few minutes before when he had raced down the field and made that spectacular long throw for the very first goal. Mm -hmm. So they were ahead by one point. Now, <clears throat> in temperament and actions, they compare uh, Mose, this Choctaw Indian, to Jim Thorpe. Oh, my. Who you know, was the uh, amazing sports athlete on the football field. Absolutely. So, anyway, these two Indian athletes had a lot in common when play started. As soon as things got going, they were a ball of fire, basically. Okay, so we're standing on the sideline. We're watching ten guys on each team out there on the field. The umpire tosses the ball and jumps clear because he has to get out of the way. I'll bet he does. <laughs> so, uh, so Mose, he comes alive. He knocked down... Two opponents uh, knocked two of them aside, trapped the ball between his bats, ran, dodged, jumped, hurling over the down players in a dash for a closer shot, and he gave a mighty throw and scored another goal. Uh-oh. So now it's two to nothing. Moe's had made two successive goals. Well, after goal scored, a lot of times they call it a little timeout, and they go to the sideline, they drink a little coffee, and uh, what happens is... The Indian women want their players to get mad and and get going. So what they do is they'll get hickory switches and they'll start smacking their players on the back to get them mad. Whoa, 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 whoa. stop for a minute. The women and the wives go get hickory switches and start beating their men on the back to get them right. mad? Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of divorces back then, weren't there? <laughs> well, hopefully when, they, when the game was over, everybody was friendly. I I'm not getting in the TP with that woman. <laughs> No, no. I mean, if you'd hope you were, your ma wife wasn't too mad at you before you went into play. Holy smokes. So they're smacking these guys to get them mad, get them angry before going back into play again. So so here we go. Play starts again, and Mose he streaks after the ball, but he was tripped by an opponent, kicked in the face. He's sprawling headlong in the dirt. Uh, he was up in a flash, and after the man who just kicked him, but he was too far behind, so... The Chickasaw player, he scored a goal. So now oh. it's two to one. Okay, now wait a minute. i got a question here for you. Okay. What year was this? You know, I'm not sure. I'm going to say about the 1870s, right? Okay. 1880s, maybe. Did they have rules that uh, didn't allow them to commit mayhem on the field? Okay, I'm going to talk about the rules here. Oh. <laughs> there are some rules. Uh -huh. uh, but you'll see how liberal they are. Okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, timeout was called again, and the banged-up players headed for the sidelines. So Moe's, he's uh, gulping down a, a little coffee, and as he's heading uh, back out to the field, he was tackled by three pretty husky Indian women and severely lashed by two others before he could break away and get back out on the field. And those were the cheerleaders. <laughs> those, were the, those were his fans. <laughs> so here he is, blood and sweat streaming down his back as he... Uh, jumps back into the battle. Uh, he knocks down an opponent flat who tried to block his leap for the ball, uh, but someone from behind lowered the boom on Mose, and down he went, and the Chickasaw made a goal without interference. So now it's 2-2. Two to two. Okay, on the next play, a Chickasaw captured the ball, sped towards his goal for a closer shot, and it was the same guy who had kicked Mose in the face. Uh-oh. So as his opponent drew back to make his throw, Moe hit him and knocked him cold. Uh-huh. So Moe scooped the ball from the ground, sprinted toward his own goal, and Cole County, uh, Moe's, in other words, on the next play, uh, they only needed one more tally, one more goal to win. The ball was tossed, and Moe's charged. Uh, an opponent grabbed his long hair, heaved him off balance, landed on top of him, pounding and clawing. Another of the opponents pounced on, and then another. So we got three guys pouncing on Moe's. And the Atoka County star was just being pummeled and beat and given the works. Well, 
in the meantime, his teammates headed down the field, and they made a goal, and so the Atoka County Choctaws had won, and nobody had been killed, which was not always the case. Now, just a minute. Um, i got to revert back to reality here. For some strange reason, I thought you were talking about a National Hockey League game. <laughs> Well, uh, I guess, yes, except not on ice and not on the skates. <laughs> so, you know, it's like the old saying, I went, to a, I went to a fight and a hockey game broke out. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, but you know, this stick ball uh, thing, that was, uh, among the tribes, there were differences in the way stick ball was played uh -huh. and variations in the arrangement of the playing field. Now, the types of goalposts in one might be different from those in another. So there wasn't a standard, basically. So, you know, really, I don't know the rules of the game of stickball. I mean, what could you do and what can't you do? Well, and I'm, let me get a little further here, and I'll tell you some of the things you can and can't Okay, do. I'm excited. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess we could compare this to lacrosse. Oh. I don't know anything about lacrosse. Oh. Okay, but anyway, <clears throat> different sized balls were used, and some tribes played the game with as many players as they could get onto the field. Uh -huh. So sometimes there was a bunch of them. Oh, wait a minute. They didn't have team numbers? I mean, like 5, 7, 11, or something like that? You could just bring the whole doggone tribe? Yeah, yeah. So mm. you could have a, a bunch of guys out there. That doesn't sound so, good. But each player carried two hickory bats, which is different than lacrosse, which is just one. Yeah. Uh, that's, about, that's about the only thing I know about lacrosse. But they would take uh, seasoned wood with steamed and one end of the bat bent into a loop, and then narrow strips of rawhide were laced across the loop to form just a kind of a shallow pocket okay. in which they could catch the ball. Right. And it's, I'm looking at a picture of this, and it's not very big. No. I'm going to say about five inches long and maybe three inches across okay. for, for this pocket. Mm -hmm. um, but what they would do, they'd carry the two, uh, the two bats, and they would try to catch the ball, and this was usually done by slamming the bats together to trap the ball between the two pockets. Mm -hmm. Now, in Mose Burris' area, the goal posts were about 15 feet high and about 100 yards apart, so sort of like a football field. Yeah. And the ball, a little larger than a golf ball, was made of leather and soaked in water until it was hard as a rock, just solid. <laughs> uh, and when it was put into play, anything could and often did happen. Now, you talk about penalties. About the only penalty assessed was for slamming a knee into a downed opponent's stomach or trying to cave in his ribs. Now, for doing this, the offending Indians team had to forfeit four points. Uh-huh. That was, so if you got really rough, you had to, and there were referees. So it was legal to trip, shove, slug, wrestle, pull hair, knock an opponent down, or try to brain him with a bat. See, you're still talking. You still aren't talking about the old stick game. You're talking about the hockey league. Now, get with the other stuff. Now, this braining with a bat, that was kind of frowned on. Uh, <laughs> but as a rule, the referees weren't concerned over it as long as the attempted braining wasn't done after the victim was already unconscious. How big are these sticks, by the way, when you talk about braining somebody with a stick? I mean, is this like a log, or what is it? No, they're quite thin. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say uh, not as thick around as a baseball bat but uh a little bit thicker than a probably two or three times thicker than a say a golf club oh okay yeah you so, can do a lot of damage with a nine yeah, iron yeah, you could so <laughs> so like i say it wasn't it was frowned upon to hit you know to brain somebody if they were already unconscious on the ground yeah you got to keep it fair yeah i mean you know you gotta have some rules and now the question sometimes comes up did indian women play stick ball well <laughs> Some tribes, they were not allowed to, like the Choctaw and the Chickasaws. They didn't allow their women to play, but the Creek Indians did. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, But they weren't nearly as rough, and sometimes they wrestled, sometimes they pulled hair and stuff. And occasionally, occasionally, men and women played stickball together. Mm. So, but again, it wasn't, you know, real rough like it was with just the men. And, I'm, I'm, this is at one point of the story where I'm not going to make any comments. Okay. <laughs> Some of the men, they wore bright red and yellow turbans. And others had feather deck broad brimmed hats that they wore while they were playing. So, yeah. but everybody seems to agree that one thing was strictly taboo in a stickball game: the players' hands could not touch the ball. Really? Okay. When the ball got away and rolled to the ground, the contestants tried to scoop it up with the bats, and so your hands are down there, and so there was often bloody results of getting your hands down next to the ball. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the object in stickball contest, besides finding out how much punishment someone could take, was to see which side could first gain, of course, a certain number of points. And so, now the number varied. Usually, the number was determined by previous games or uh, brawls, if you want to call them that, between well-matched teams. So if there had been a lot of devastating punishment inflicted before in a previous game, the goal was set usually low, like maybe four or six or eight. Really? Because the higher the goal, the more chance there were that people were going to get seriously hurt. I think the safest job in these old-time Indian sports was being a scorekeeper. (laughs) I think so. (laughs) Sit up on a ladder and, you know, put the numbers up there on the scoreboard. Yeah. And even then, I, I don't know if that was totally safe. Yeah, old Geronimo sitting up on top of his teepee. There's going to be a hard press to get him. <laughs> That's right. So, anyway, Stigmall gave the Indians a chance to unleash their agility, their endurance against friendly enemies, if you want to call them that. <laughs> uh, maybe it was a warm-up for real battles that maybe occurred later. Holy but smokes. A little bit about Moe's Burris. i, I got to tell you a little bit about him. Like I say, he was a great athlete. But... Uh, when he was about 25, he was sworn in as a deputy sheriff. Mm-hmm. And one time, Mose and some other lawmen went after some uh, Creek Indians who were raiding members of other tribes as well as their fellow Creeks, and uh, they were stealing horses. And some of the stolen animals were driven to the Texas border, others to the Kansas border where uh, they were bought by white men. And the ringleaders of, these, uh, of this little group were two Indians, one by the name of Greenleaf and the other by the name of Black Tiger. Mm-hmm. Well, this mounted posse, which was traveling with a chuck wagon, had stopped in the thicket to make camp. They were after these these renegade Indians. Now, as a rule, when hunted men go into instant action, uh, they go into action as soon as they feel like there's danger. Absolutely. Well, one of the lawmen glanced up just as the outlaws rode out of some timber and spotted the chuck wagon, and he they jerked their rifles up and started yelling and firing and shooting, and people were dodging and getting behind bushes. Well, during this hide-and-seek battle, which followed, one lawman, lawman was shot in the heel, and he immediately quit fighting. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, he couldn't, he couldn't walk. But no. The others carried on, and two of the outlaws were killed. Uh, the remaining three, they took off on their horses, and, but they were pursued. And anyway, the two leaders, Black Tiger and Greenleaf, were captured, uh, and they brought them back to the wagon and handcuffed them. And anyway, the wounded officer with the wound in his heel, he kind of got some razzing because, you know, typically they don't quit fighting until they're either dead or running out of ammunition. Absolutely. What a coward that guy yeah, was. Yeah, I mean, he just got shot in the heel for heaven's sake. Yeah, now what about Mose? Was he the hero? Okay, well, let me keep going here. Okay. Uh, you know, like say, uh, there's one, sometimes lawmen are kind of pictured as being heartless gunslingers. Mm. Yeah, why are... In some cases, that has probably been so, but... Sure. Uh, one incident in the career of Mose uh, kind of gives us some insight into his uh, attitude, his decency. Uh, and probably there's a lot of them that were like this. But at one point, Mose was handed a warrant to bring in a man who had imbibed a little too much of the, uh, of the, of the drink. Imagine that. Serving the peace. Oh, my. So he, there was a warrant for his arrest. So the fellow lived on the side of a mountain. Well, Moses was asked if he wanted somebody to go with him, and he said, no, he says, I'm okay. He said, that man doesn't want to hurt me. All I'm going to do is bring him in. Well, Moses walked up to the wanted man's door, and the man called. He said, come on in. Well, Moses stepped inside the cabin, and he explained, Mose, uh, explained that he had come to take him to town on a charge of disturbing the peace. And Moses said, you know, I kind of felt sorry for him. Uh, he told me to wait until he got his coat and told his wife where he was going, and he says, I watched him real close, and... He says he went into another room, and he said something to his wife, and he came out and said, Well, he says, I guess I'm ready as I'll ever be. I wonder if you'd do me a favor, though. So the man asked Moe, he said, uh, uh, he told me his wife was due to have a baby any day, and he, he hated to go away and leave her alone. Mm-hmm. So he said, if I would get the judge to let him come back and stay with his wife until after the baby was born, and she was able to take care of it, that he would promise to come back on his own. Absolutely. So... Mo said, I agreed to do what I could, so he said, we went into town, and I explained things to the judge. Well, the judge wanted to know what the fellow could put up for bond, and he didn't have anything. And he says, I told the judge if he would let him go back, and he failed to show up, as he said, I would go bring him in. Well, the judge decided to give it a try, and the man was released, and later came back in on his own, just mm. like he promised. Mm-hmm. So... 
Mose was, uh, he also worked as a cowboy. And uh, like I say, he was quite an athlete. And uh, he must have been pretty good hand with a rope because it says that he was exceptionally good at roping goats. Really? Now, Zeb, you're a roper, I know. Yeah, they call us goat ropers all the time. I know. But, you know, according to this, to rope a goat is harder than roping a cow. Oh, by far, I think. Because they're, they're so speedy and oh. jumping around. And, but uh, old Moe, he, he could rope about anything, yeah. including goats. <clears throat> Never try a pig? <laughs> I've never done that, no. Okay. <laughs> but uh, he was also a pretty good shot with a gun. One time there were some fellows that uh, uh, heard about his shooting skill, and they came to his place and uh, to see if this was true. And one young man picked up a big old tin can and put it on the ground a few yards away uh, where the old lawman stood holding his uh, forty-five Colt. And he said, uh, Mr. Burroughs, see if you can hit that can. Well, Moe's answered. He said, well, he says, why don't you toss it up in the air? Well, when he did, there were three quick shots exploded, and the young fellow hurried over to the can, picked it up, and looked. And sure enough, uh, there were three holes in it. Holy cow. You know, a lot of that stuff we always think is just Hollywood, but I yeah. guess there really were some guys that could handle those big old Colt 45s back in the old days. Yeah. Well, not only that, but there was another occasion where uh, some people came to visit him, and they had a twenty two automatic rifle. Well, they found a board that had a hole in it, about an inch and a half around, and so they put a piece of paper on the opposite side, so all you saw was the white uh, of the hole. Well, Mose took the rifle and he emptied it, just boom, 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 boom. They went over to the board, and sure enough, every shot had gone right through that inch and a half Ooh. hole. Wow. <laughs> so, Man. But, uh, like I say, he was, he was pretty good at the guy that's writing the story tells that uh, uh, he asked if Moe still had that 45 Colt, and he did, and so uh, he asked if he could shoot it, and so they were outside, and uh, the author says that he lifted up that 45, and he raised it above his shoulder and lowered it to line up on a fence post, and at this point, uh, Moe said, uh, said, I guess you're not too good of a shot, are you? <laughs> <laughs> you know... He says, he says, well, no, I'm, I'm not a very good shot. He says... When you lifted that gun up and then dropped it down on your target, he said, I could tell that you're going to overshoot. You shoot too high. Uh-huh. And he said, do it this way. Okay, so most, if you can picture this, he's, and now by this time, he's an old man. Mm-hmm. Okay? And I know we're running out of time, so i got to hurry. But basically, uh, he remained seated, moved the pistol to his right thigh, held it in place with his left hand, and dropped his right arm down, hanging low, Pulled it up real quick, flash, uh, quick as a flash, like a fast draw artist, and uh, show the guy. Uh, that's how you shoot. When you're bringing it up, it's like you point your finger, and then as you come up, that's when you pull the trigger. Really? You don't bring it down like you see, uh, up, you know, above your head. Yeah. L- like you see. Oh, like yeah. the old uh, Hoot Gibson type things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, again, I know we're about out of time, so let me just finish on uh, Mr. And Mrs. Burris, his yeah, wife. Yeah, real they, fast. I got a minute left. Thirteen children. Oh my! Eight of whom are living. And this was back in 1964, though. Woo! Uh, Mose helped raise two children of Mrs. Burris's by a previous marriage. Mose was 66 when his first child was born. Mm-hmm. 85 when Mary Frances, the youngest, was born, and this was in 1953. So he was past 98 at this point. If you think I'm going to make a comment, you're dead wrong. <laughs> That's the story of Mose versus Mose Burris. I want to get Shot back. Indian. I want to get back real quick to the buckskin beauties that were the cheerleaders. Man alive! I mean, they weren't exactly the Dallas Cowgirl cheerleaders, were they? No, but they got their they got the attention of the of their uh, their Indian uh, team. I guess they did. That was a good story about Mose Burris. I'd like to read more about that one. Listen, I appreciate you being on the program. You do a great job every week. Doctor History, better known as Doctor Ken Turner, chiropractor in Burley. Thank you so much and. Uh, Real quick, how's your idea coming along? Uh, talked to John yesterday. We're moving ahead. All right. That's better so, than backwards. Looking good. Okay. Thanks much.
Okay, you have a good day, Zach. God bless. Take care. Bye. The story of Mose Burris. That was interesting. I like that one. Holy cow, hang on just a minute. i got to quickly tell you, every Thursday, right here at Zebeth Ranch, we have a segment called School Days in Cache County, and it is brought to you by two wonderful businesses. We thank A Child's World at 1308 Overland Avenue in Burley. And, of course, don't forget, they've got all their spring clothes arriving daily. They've got all the baby material, the baby shoes, and don't forget birthday gifts and gift wrapping is always free. And they got the Cherokee and Dickie scrubs. They've got it all for you. Family store at, of course, A Child's World. And they're located again at 1308 Overland Avenue in Burley. And our other great sponsor we really say thank you to, Ambulatory Surgery Center, 1344 Highland Avenue in Burley. Call 677-8888. Doctors who bring their patients to the Ambulatory Surgery Center to give them outstanding care and save them money. Absolutely discussing eye surgery, tonsils, ear surgery, uh, colonoscopies, you name it, right there at the Ambulatory Surgery Center, along with A Child's World bringing you school days in Cassia County. Right now, we're going to take a little break and be back in three minutes. Don't go away. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Oh, thank you very much, sir. And right now, Gina, if you don't mind, I'm going to change the procedure just a little bit. And we're going to have our weather update before we get Senator Hyder on the phone with us this morning. And the weather this hour with Michael Rogers, brought to you by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. Number to call, remember this, 324-7657. At Scarrow's, they offer quality products at very reasonable rates. And don't forget, in addition to expert meat cutting, they also have their own smokehouse. Don't you forget it. Selling taste one bite at a time, Scarrow's Meats in Jerome. And right now, here's Michael Rogers' weather. Hello, everyone. Michael Rogers from MichaelRogersWeather.com. Got a cold front coming through, and uh, it'll be through tomorrow. But so far for today, you broke a record yesterday with te- record high temperatures. You can break one today. 73 for the high, 40 for the overnight low. Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got. There you go, Michael. Thank you very much. Brought to you by our friends at Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. And don't forget, locally owned custom meat processor serving Jerome in southern Idaho for over 20 years, Scarrow's Meats. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, right now I'm very blessed to have with us on the program a man that I hold in high regard. I've got a lot of respect for what he's done in uh, a capacity as a state senator. And I say good morning to Senator Lee Hyder from Twin Falls. Good morning, Lee. How are you? Well, good morning, Zeb. I'm great. And thanks for uh, calling because my wife had me out there trimming lilac bushes and raking the yard and all those things that I haven't been here for three months to do. Well, I'm glad to have you in the house. I kind of saved your life a little bit, didn't I? You did indeed. (laughs) Thank you. Lee, I've got to ask you, uh, you're the chairman of the Health and Welfare Committee, and uh, this past Sunday in the Times News, it seems like the Solomons that write the Times News feel that they know everything about what should have taken place and what didn't take place at the legislative session, and they graded all of our legislators, either A, A minus, B, C, etc., and uh, evidently the Times News doesn't like you very much, and I thought I'd get you on the air and find out exactly what your thoughts were. Well, you know, I consider that kind of a red badge of courage, uh, Zeb. If if the liberals don't like me, that means that I must be a pretty good conservative. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Well, tell us a little bit. I I think we did a great many wonderful things in the legislature this year. Uh, you know, I, I I don't know if you want me to go into some of them, or if, if you want me to talk, or if you want to ask questions, or how would you like to handle? Well, them? basically, you've uh, you've done I think very well in uh, looking at certain issues uh, with the wildlife bill, and then also with the payday lending bill. And why don't you discuss why you think that the Times News and their liberalistic approach to this thing decided to give you a C minus? What do you think they don't think you did? Well, I think, I think relative to the payday lending bill, you know, we, we tried that about the first session I was in, in the Senate, and uh, it didn't go very well, and we've been working on it ever since. And quite frankly, this is a bill that was written by the Department of Finance. It's mm-hmm. written by Lee Heider. 
I carried the bill because they think I'm a, a champion for for uh, helping folks that are in payday lending problems. And let me explain three things that this bill did. Mm-hmm. First of all, um, it, it you have to certify in writing that you are not borrowing more than 25% of your gross monthly income. Right. So if you make $500, the most you can borrow is $125. Mm-hmm. So this, this, first of all, helps people not to overextend themselves. Now, normal payday lending uh, charges you up front. They don't charge interest. They charge fees. And so they charge, say, $20 to borrow 100 So you write a check for $120. They'll give you $100. And in two weeks, they can present your check at the bank for collection. Mm-hmm. Uh, if that's not suitable, then you get bank fees. We've limited the bank fees to two presentments from, from the uh, lending institution. The other really big thing we did is, is we added an extended payment plan. If you come in at the end of two weeks and you can't pay off your loan and you don't want your check presented at the bank, you have the right to extend that payment out for 60 days with no interest, no penalty, no fees, essentially capping your loan at 20% rather right. than the 36% that the naysayers would like to have put on extended on the payday loans. So really, quite frankly, the Department of Finance is trying to help borrowers not to get in trouble, have a way out, an escape, an escape clause, if you will, from getting under this presentment of their check and... Uh, and not being able to pay the money that they borrowed back and then go into small claims court. It, Absolutely. It can be a financial ruin for people. So I, I applaud the Department of Finance. I was very proud to carry their bill this year. I, I carried it through the, through the Commerce Committee. Uh, Senator Tippett's was very helpful, and and the, the Commerce Committee voted to, to pass it and send it to the floor. We sent it to the floor, passed all but the, uh, the liberals who, who aren't happy. Lee. So, quite frankly, I thought it was a great bill, and I thought the Department of Finance did a great job. So, And it really does help those people that are in this payday lending cycle. Absolutely. Lee, let me ask you this. Um, it seemed like when I read the newspaper story about did they make the grade, the Times News had some animosity that they said uh, that at the legislative session certain things weren't addressed, like Medicaid expansion or add the words or uh, funding of public education or fixing state highways how would you respond to those negatives that they said the legislative session didn't look at you know Zeb in in Idaho at least in the Republican Party we tend to follow the governor's edict and the governor had no intention of expanding Medicaid this year and so we fell in line with that quite frankly but think about it would you would you like to see the federal government go into further debt they already print 200 million dollars an hour just to cover their debt service that and, and if we were to go off of the dollar standard say for a barrel of oil at a hundred dollars if it was a hundred yen or a hundred euro or a hundred rubles this country would be bankrupt overnight we cannot afford to pay more money to more people for more things from the federal government. And as you well know, most of the most of our uh, health and welfare issues are funded 70, 30, 70 from the federal government, 30 from state government. So I don't think anybody had the disposition to, to, to get in bed with the federal government any further. They, Absolutely. They are not a good risk. Absolutely. So expanding Medicaid was not a good idea. But uh, on the other hand, we did set up a state exchange, and, and hundreds of thousands of people are getting health insurance through the state exchange. It was one of, We did that last year, but it's proven to be one of the best things we ever did because more and more people are covered by their private insurance to cover some, some of those things that Medicaid would otherwise uh, cover for them. Mm-hmm. So there, there were a lot of good things, I think, that happened in that realm. And, of course, I... We have uh, we had a great many bills come through Health and Welfare Committee, probably more bills than anybody else in the in this whole state's house. So we're we're pretty busy in that committee, and I have a great committee who is very wise and and uh, learned, and we just make I think very good decisions for our health care. I agree. We have a statewide health care innovation plan that is truly it's a, it's a total wellness concept where doctors are paid to keep us well, not 
not paid for each visit that we go and visit them at the hospital or at their office. Uh, their objective is to keep us well, and, and it's spreading throughout the whole state through, a, through an organized uh, system. In fact, I have a meeting on the 2nd to uh, go back to Boise and visit with the statewide health care innovation plan folks. So there's a lot of good things happening out there, Zeb, that, that the people don't seem to realize or that they don't buy into because we... We aren't spending more federal dollars. It would seem to me, Lee, that uh, the Times News or any newspaper or any media outlet would be far better served to their constituents and their public if they would meet with you one-on-one, -on -one, ask direct questions, and find out your thoughts and your feelings on certain subjects, and then make up a story regarding their interview with you. Rather than to grade everybody, uh, A, B, C, D, F, whatever the case might be, without really having a chance to find out what their feelings were on the subjects. Well, I certainly don't disagree with that. In fact, uh, if you remember about three weeks ago, the Times News read, read, wrote an editorial about payday lending and how I'd failed because it hadn't come forth yet, and we were working on that at that time. You know, these things all take time to get through the process of, of going through a committee, going through the floor of the Senate, going over to a House committee, going in the House the House floor and going to the governor. And, you know, uh, never once did they talk to me about payday lending, airport zoning, EpiPens, the Vietnam Memorial Highway. Not one word from the Times News mm -hmm. to me about any of the issues that were coming before us. The, the uh, enhanced concealed weapons permit for campus, uh, for, uh, for guns on campus. You know, and that's the other thing. Oftentimes people don't understand what's happening they hear they hear this term guns on campus they think oh how terrible how can the senate be involved in putting guns on campus quite frankly we tighten that up at present anybody could have carried a gun on a campus That's now right. only those with an enhanced concealed weapons permit can carry a gun absolutely on campus. absolutely so oftentimes i think the rhetoric is what people hear and they don't really read the bills or study the bills or think about how how we should have uh, gun legislation. I agree. I think if you look at, at my voting record, I, in fact, I sit next to Senator Brack, as whom I love and admire, and I think, I think without exception, we probably voted the same on the issues. So I, if, if they rate one of us, they ought to rate the other one identical if, if we voted pretty much similar on most of the bills. I so, agree. Um, I really do think that would be a, a good first step to be to visit with us as individuals and then and then write an editorial about how they think we did or how we think we did. We we have the greatest budget for education since 2007. Zeb, we, we put more money into education, and yet last night I heard an educator say, gosh, I wish we could get back to 2007 levels. Mm -hmm. Well, we can't. We don't have the money that we had in 2007, but we put more money in education than we have in the last six years. So there you go. How much better can it be than that? Absolutely. Now, we have a caller with a question. Caller, go ahead quickly, please, if you would. Oh, uh, yeah. What did uh, he do there to stop Common Core? Lee, uh, the question, I don't know if you heard it or not. What about Common I, Core I education? Hear, I did hear the question. Okay. You know, every every school system, I call them Idaho Core Standards, and, and the Idaho made up their own core standards. We didn't just adopt Common Core from the federal government, but we set standards in place in the state of Idaho for Idaho students to try and get them up to speed, to go to our Idaho colleges and universities and not have to take remedial courses in English or history so that they can move on in their college studies. And so we didn't actually have a common, a common core or an Idaho core standard uh, we never voted on any issues relative to that other than we support the Idaho Department of Education in setting up Idaho core standards, Idaho standards for our kids in high school and junior high. So um, I, I think that's very important to have a standard. It doesn't necessarily fall in line with the federal government's idea. And you hear that phrase, once again, core standards. Uh, 
Idaho has great standards for their young people in school. All right, Glee, a question that I've got is uh, also uh, one of the negatives that Times News tried to throw out in front of the public, that there was nothing done on fixing state highways. The infrastructure and the repair of our highways is very critical, but the money is very tight. Where is the money going to come from to fix up the highways and byways? Well, you know, Zeb, we, we went round and round with that this year. There are two avenues. You can We can charge more on a gallon of gas. We can put a tax on every gallon of gas in Idaho and let those people that are using the highways pay for the infrastructure of fixing the highways. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is that the more we charge for gas, the truckers will fill up in Wyoming or Utah and drive to Oregon and never stop for gas in Idaho. That's right. You know, So that's one option. The other option is to put a uh, penny or two sales tax on, and that puts everybody in the boat of paying for highways. It's, a, it's an ongoing discussion, Zeb, and, and I don't know that there's an easy answer to how we fix our highways, how we build new bridges, but we have funded ITD to the uh, maximum extent possible uh, at, at this time, but we're, that's an ongoing discussion of how we're going to do that and whether we really want to add more tax to to everything or whether we just want to add tax to gasoline. Lee, let me ask you this question on the positive side. The session's over for 2014. What do you consider the greatest achievements from the overall legislative session for the state of Idaho? Well, I think the legislation that came out, for example, I passed a bill on airport zoning. We've been trying to do that for four years, and finally we eliminated a whole section of code to get that through. You know, it's not any one thing. I think we funded education. We funded uh, health and human services. We, we funded prison, the correctional system. We tried to make uh, adjustments in our correctional system and our, and our uh, uh, parole officer situation. We, we funded natural resources, economic development, the federal, the state government. You know, all those things have to play into to what we funded, and quite frankly, we extended over the governor's recommend recommendation of uh, 2.8 uh, billion and made it 2.934 billion. So we spent more than what the governor would have had us had to spend, but I think we covered more people with better, you know, certainly better education, uh, better health, better public safety. So all those things weighed into the things we voted on this year, and I think the, se the session was very, very successful, and I think the people of Idaho ought to be very proud of their legislature, both the House and the Senate, for what we really accomplished this year. You know, and leading into that last part of your sentence, what about other areas? What about Utah, Wyoming, Montana, Nevada, and Oregon and Washington, our neighboring states? How would you say our state of Idaho leads and governs perhaps better than they, or are we on an equal basis? Where would you put Idaho? Well, I'd, I'd put Idaho number one, but then I'm, I'm obviously a little prejudiced because I was born here, raised here, love it here. I'm raising, or my kids are all here, and they're raising 27 grandkids here. And, and quite frankly, I hope that Idaho is the best state in the union. You don't find Chobani going uh, to Utah, Oregon, or Washington. They chose here. Cliff mm -hmm. Bar mm -hmm. chose here. Mm -hmm. Why did they do that? They like the valley. They like Idaho. They like our tax structure. They think we're a solid state. We're not in debt. You know, the list goes on and on about why these companies are choosing to come to Idaho. They're impressed with Idaho. Our natural resources are here. We take good care of our water. You know, Zeb, there are so many positives of living in Idaho. I think the people of Idaho are very, very fortunate to live in this state. I agree with you. Any final thoughts about the conclusion of the 14 legislative session and looking ahead to next year, 2015? Well, I'm sure, Zeb, that we'll have a lot of the same issues come forward. You know, uh, obviously, at the words, isn't going away anytime soon. The lack of uh, money coming into the coffers isn't going to probably diminish. You know, we, we have issues in Idaho. Nobody questions that. I, quite frankly, love the people that... Uh, to want to add the words, but but that's that's just not something that's probably going to happen in Idaho that's for, right. for some years to come. Uh, we're a very conservative state, probably one of the most conservative in the nation, 
And that's the reason I like living here. I could have chosen when I got out of the Air Force to live in any state in the Union or any country in the world. And I came back to Twin Falls because I love it here, and I'm so proud to represent Idaho from the city of Twin Falls. All right. Well, Senator Lee Hyder, I thank you very much for the time this morning. Unfortunately, that means we're done and that you have to pick up the old clippers and go back out to the rose bushes. So have a good day, my friend. Well, you'll make Jan happy, but thank you, Zeb, for giving me some time. All right, sir. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen right. from Twin Falls, right. Senator Lee Hyder, and I appreciate him coming on and talking about the uh, closed 2014 legislative session and looking ahead to next year with the wants and needs of the state of Idaho. Uh, got time for some calls. Give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. And while I'm waiting for your calls, I'll also get in here and say, hey, 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 you better get over to any one of the seven Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers for the big spring tire sale. Tire sale, that says it all. I mean, the best of their tires, all their tires on sale, like the Ultra Z900, all the best of touring, uh, all-season touring tires on sale, 20% more tread life, outstanding wet and dry traction, quieter riding tire. You're going to find this, and along with all the tires for your vehicles, also including the Open Country AT2, great traction tire for your pickups. Hey, stop in. The best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries, they they got custom wheels on sale. What are you waiting for? Get on in there today and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, John on Pole Line and Twin, and Randy on Overland and Burley. Great big spring tire sale. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Okay, let's see what we got tomorrow. Actually, I got to tell you something. Really happened funny. It's the first time it's ever happened on this program in a long time. Uh, normally, I always book my guests at least two to three weeks ahead. And tomorrow, I had one, two, three cancellations, uh, some sickness, some had other meetings and everything. So tomorrow, I know for sure. We're going to have in the first hour the open forum and talk about anything you want to talk about and comment on. And then at 9.06, I know I've got Colorado Doug Johnson coming on the program. But from there on in, I'm going to be a busy little boy this afternoon trying to fill everything for tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow morning's program. So it'll be a surprise to me also. Gina, any final thoughts before we wrap things up over here this morning? Well, always flying by the seat of our pants. Great show. It was nice to have uh, Senator Lee Heider on with us. And and I'm going to do some more investigation and, and really bone up on what's going on over there in Scotland. Isn't that something? Uh, and I appreciate the fact that you do. And by the way, if you want to check on it, you can go to other websites like Ron Paul's website. They've got the story on there and some others. And uh, one thing I wanted to mention to you is that this Thursday is Lunch Punch Day. You're aware of that. Yes, I am. And yes, I will be there. Okay. And we also want to thank, along with Denny's Restaurant, our dear friends that help us with the door prizes, Smith's Food King, Walmart. Walmart and Hanson Mortuary, and you've won some of the door prices, haven't you? I have. I've won a Walmart gift card before, and I've won a Smith's gift card before, and which I have used. You know, the thing I've noticed since we moved over to Denny's, and you've probably noticed the same thing, number one, service, oh, fantastic. Phenomenal service, and, and the food is great. It, and it, it, quick service, too. I am not going to stay on my diet Thursday. <laughs> I am going to order something I really, really want off the menu, and I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, we got, what, 65, 70 people that show yeah. up in that room, and it's just really nice. Everybody can hear. Everybody can talk to everybody else. I really enjoy it over there. I really do, too. And, of course, uh, the management over there is superb, and uh, it's just kind of like a fun little time for all of us to get together and, you know, do our Thing. Absolutely. Well, good to have you coming down Thursday. It's going to be at 1130 at Denny's Restaurant in Burley, and we will see you there. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to remind everybody about a couple of quick things here. Um, tickets are on sale for the Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North, A Night of Patriots, and Today's Heroes. Tickets are available at uh, www.sergeantchrisworkmanscholarship.com or call 436-4149. That's going to be on April 12th in Burley. 
Foley at the King Fine Arts Center at 7 p.m. And then also at the Trinity Lutheran Church over in Eden, the um, uh, Jews for Jesus is going to be there. An excellent presentation in the past, and they're looking forward to having other people in the community stop over. They're going to have a soup supper at 6 p.m. that night and a presentation at 7, and that's going to be on Thursday night, April 10th at 7 p.m. Those are just a couple of the uh, public service announcements we've got for this morning. And I will tell you, we'll have a great big and complete program tomorrow morning again at 8.06, right here on KBAR, 12.30 a.m., and then streaming live all over the universe on ZebBell.com. And uh, remember always that the way things were are the way things ought to be. God bless you and your family. Tune us in tomorrow morning. Have a good day. It's going to be up in the 70s today. 70s. Enjoy springtime in the Magic Valley. We'll see you tomorrow morning.